Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, here on HighVibe.TV. And today we have special guest JK Ultra in the studios. We're going to be talking everything from every dimension, if you want to go into it that way. But without further ado, let's just go right into it. What's up? How are you doing? Hey, I'm so excited to be here. You know, I've been a fan of your work since the beginning, David. Since the OG old weekly forecasts on YouTube. Really? Yeah. So I'm excited to be here. Oh, well, I'm super stoked to be with you. I mean, I've known you now for a long time, too. Yeah. And I love the work that you do, especially we're both on the common denominator of whether it's Nostradamus, past life regression, astrology, UAP, UFO, disclosure, timelines, spirituality, the cool, the weird, all of it. But that's what I think you do so well to do is you bring all of it into such a beautiful way of like, I don't know, why don't you describe to people, for those that don't know who you are, who you are and what you do? Because it's, I, I can't corner you in a box. You're <laughs> unboxable, you know? Um, thank you. So um, I, it is hard to describe what I do. I think it's still evolving right now, you know, because this is not something that I really planned or set out to do. Um, this unraveling of what I don't even know what to call myself. I kind of am a researcher. Mm. Um, I'm a content creator. I, my biggest platform is TikTok. That's kind of what blew up for me. Um, actually, because of some of the topics that we're talking about today, the apocalypse, breaking down the apocalypse on TikTok uh, changed my life. Mm. <laughs> and um, it, it really is a wild experience. And I've tried a million different things in my life. And for with the TikTok, I was just like, oh, this would be cool. I care about like this Glane Maxwell allegedly having a Reddit account. So oh. I made a video about it and then it went viral. And then from there, everything just, I was like, oh, I got a lot of cool conspiracy ideas up my sleeve. And then it just kind of evolved from like some conspiracies to spirituality and then aliens, consciousness, dimensions went deeper and deeper. And now I don't know what's next. Well, it, it I mean, I'm an astrologer, so you, I know you do astrology too, because you do, I just saw your full moon reflection. You also do a moon My book, moon book. Like, out, like Farmer's Almanac. Yeah. Like, you know, you do it all. So my moon book is actually um, something that I wanted to create for women because it's something that I've always wanted, you know, and I'm sure you know this being an astrologer, that a woman's menstrual cycle lines up with the moon cycle. It's also the same amount of time, has the same four phases of the cycle. And so I always kind of wanted to like figure out where is my cycle with the moon and how Ooh. to kind of use that. So it's basically, um, yeah. So I created like a workbook that combines moon manifestation and a menstrual tracker so that you can basically manifest with the moon and with your period. It's, it's really cool actually. I mean, I, I, I think now that I'm a dad and, and watching um, Sophia go through a pregnancy I, I noticed something really weird, and this might sound crazy, but so women have their menstrual cycles. But then, of course, once you become pregnant, every month that it would be normally her menstrual cycle, the development of the baby, the mm -hmm. like the the stuff that Sophia would have to go through, and then watching after the birth, you know, as she's breastfeeding, and those cycles come around, and then the transformation I'm still seeing in Aurora and in her. It's connected mm. so powerfully, no matter what. I'll be honest, prior to this experience <laughs> that I've been going through for the last year and a half, I think as guys, you know, I, I mean, I'm an astrologer and esoterically I understand it. And I know and it is a great way for me to help describe people that don't understand astrology or moon cycles. Like, hey, like, you know, that balsamic dark moon, that's the period. You know, like, I, I'm so like, you know, like, but I think that it's great that you're able to really implement this and give it especially to women. And I think it's good for guys, right? If yeah. a guy's dating a woman or married to a woman or even a going to date some woman, they, they, they should know yeah. and understand this uh, because it's a very sacred thing. And of course for men, it, to me, it's the Mars retrograde, mm. which takes two years to happen. Right. And like during that fucking three months retrograde, like, Hey <laughs> ladies, <laughs> We're resetting a lot of things too. It just takes us a little okay, bit longer. Okay, that's good to you know. know I mean? uh, that's good to know where the man's 
kind of cycle is with that because that's something that always comes up because it's obviously the women's cycle is very obvious. You know, we have a physical indicator in the 3D world of right. what's happening in the hormonal cycle. So it's interesting because a lot of people um, speculate about the male cycle and then they just say the male cycle is only 24 hours like the sun and then the women, you know, you can really see now that you're, uh, have a daughter and all of this stuff, you can probably see like the real moon influence on women. Oh, well, this might be a good way to kind of open the convo. Uh, as an astrologer, I would say that what makes a man and a woman different with cycles is that a woman during her, she has a period. Men don't physically have a period, right? So like a guy is shooting it off every day so really there is no stop if you think of that sense the sun is always burning mm -hmm. bright 24 7 yeah whether might be cloudy or, or rainy yeah. a day but <laughs> but if a guy is has ed mm -hmm. he's not in his soul mm. but then we go to the use the mars venus that's the more masculine feminine so to me the sun and the moon are much more of the the soul's expression and, and to create souls, mm -hmm. to create souls. But the masculine and feminine go through their shit through the Venus and Mars cycles, which are the two planets that take the longest to retrograde. Venus, 18 months, Mars is every two years. Interesting. And so we just went through a Venus retrograde this year. So, you know, women this year it was weird, but we also went through a Mars retrograde that was coming into this 2023. So both went through blah. So whenever I see the same year of every planet retrograding, that's wow. rare. Yeah. And so. And we're of kind of the in the clear now, more. right? Yeah. I we're mean, <laughs> 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 but I don't know what you think about that, but like, you know, that, that's how I look at it. Yeah. No, I totally, um, I haven't really thought that much, but obviously like the book says, uh, women are from Mars. Oh wait, men are from Mars, women right. are from Venus. Um, and that probably just like ripples out into everything esoteric. Cause when you get into that stuff, obviously, you know, astrology is kind of like an, a template. And then that same template goes through all different types of information that lines up perfectly, you know, mythology, Greek gods, different archetypes, different blueprints, all of these th different things. It lines up with astrology. So I'm not surprised. I, d I doubt the guy that wrote that book was an astrologer though. Well, I mean, he was, he understands the basics. He's more of a psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, some of his ways of thinking about it all are kind of changing from then. Oh, yeah. Although you brought up the book that was the first spiritual book that I saw on my mom's nightstand that made me think about astrology. Like, and then most people don't know, or some people know, but that my, my, my mom's father was an astrologer. So. Oh, wow. And he was a Scorpio that kept it secret, zero Scorpio. I know that's your ascendant. So wow. He ran a TV repair shop and TV shop here in Newport Beach, and in the shop, he did astrology. Wow. So oh, my God, that's so cool. I didn't find out until he passed away when I was 18. The secrecy of the, the zero degree Scorpio. It right? is the ultimate secrecy. It was, so... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we're in a world, though, where this is finally opening, and you're definitely part of that. So I know a lot of people want to understand, because I've seen it in comments and stuff, like, what made you call yourself JK Ultra? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it was really just like a joke. I love a pun. I, I just can't help myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a good title unless it's a pun of another title in my mind. So, um it was kind of random. I just, for some reason, you know, thought it, what I originally thought I was going to cover, um, I made a TikTok in 2020 before I ever posted on it. I did like one like sketch and these like two like 14 year old boys are like, oh my God, dude, she looks like your mom. And the guy's like, I love my mom. She does look like my mom. And I was like, screw this app. I need to get off of this app. This was also like five, uh, four years ago now. So I was just hitting 30 and I was like, you know what? I'm never coming back to this. So I thought that I was going to do like some type of like funny content connected to conspiracies. So that's why I picked JK ultra. Um, and then I was going to delete the whole thing. Um, I did delete the app off my phone after those young boys said wow. that. <laughs> and then and then I randomly in 2022 decided, um, me and my friends thought it would be funny to like post on TikTok 
We basically felt like we missed out on Bitcoin. We missed out on this. Everything <laughs> was growing and we've missed out on all of them. So we're like, if we don't just get TikToks, <laughs> we need to get into something early. Right. And um, apparently that whole entire conversation, you know, in divine timing was really just for me because my friends didn't really end up really taking to TikTok that much. So it was kind of like this whole thing between me and my friends are like, let's make TikToks. And then, um, yeah, I started posting about Ghislaine Maxwell and then John Benet Ramsey and then about mm. Nostradamus. Well, I'm going to say that I'm glad that you kept with it. You did win a big award this year. At I Stairway did. To so the did Stars. you. You won the same award, which I think is kind of cool that we're yeah. here. What's the name of the award? I forgot that. Like, I think it's a social media superstar. Oh, that's what it is. Mm. Yeah. Describes us pretty well. No. It does. And we are both Leos, which I think I know. is really interesting. It was needed. I, the Leo energy. I feel like, yeah, the, the pun is important as a Leo with the name. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like some people really take it really serious. Like, I can't believe this guy has the courage to do it the courage or the, <laughs> the egotism to call himself the Leo King. And I'm like, but it's a great name. Oh, you fell for the thing. Like, uh -huh. I'm just like living my life as a Leo. And what exactly. are Leos, Kings, Queens? I'm sorry. You want to call it lion people? Some people call me lion King. And I'm like, no, I'm not lion King. <laughs> That's copyright. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I think it's great your name because I think it's such an important subject because so many people are waking up and mm -hmm. that's where I want to take this convo with you. Where in all of that you're covering, because you cover, it's hard, it's like I said, you're, you're hard to box because there's so many, you're super into the esoteric, you're super, I mean, honestly, you're super into astrology. So that's why I think a lot of people do connect to you because I feel like people want to know that you're just not just throwing shit mm -hmm. out without it having an understanding of the divine, which you mm -hmm. understand very well. But out of all the stuff you've been covering, what is this, the most interesting to you that, that really is the inspiration that draws you in that you just can't let go of, that you want to keep going deeper into? What is that? So it's definitely evolving. And like I told you earlier, I did an ayahuasca ceremony. It was four nights. It was four ceremonies. Um, so right now it's changing and I feel like I'm kind of up in the air, a little bit in flow. I feel like my stuff is going to be changing. But up until this point, um, the pretty much the biggest topic for me is like the new earth. Like mm -hmm. that's pretty much the like most important thing of all, uh, you know, fifth dimension, if people resonate with that type of wording, but also, you know, it's just like everything else. It's just a word to describe something. So that's really what I care about is the shift of consciousness. And that's always going to be the topic. Even if I do kind of, I feel myself going more towards, um, just because right now I've been working on a book for the last 10 years before I was doing any of this. And it's a little bit more towards like, kind of like the conspiracies around what created the modern woman. Mm. And so kind, there was obviously a whole bunch of crazy stuff with the American dream and all of this stuff right. that really shaped what women are. So it's kind of like a comedic self-help book about that. So my content is gonna be taking a shift more towards like, still be in that like conspiracy realm, but more towards like um, what women have kind of, what we believe to be feminine or women and stuff right. like that is mostly like from marketing agencies. It's like some mad men shit. Which that was a great show. But I, I, I do think that new earth and understanding everything that got us to the new earth is so important mm -hmm. because I think that looking into history is, is super the deep connection to time, to timelines, to divinity, like, and, and there's all of it about understanding how I don't think we fully understand time itself. Anybody mm -hmm. who says they do is crazy. To yeah. Me. But I think that through the understanding of astrology or even galactic astrology or galactic consciousness, which really to me is new earth, right? Is like yeah. taking ourselves out to the widest views that are possible. But I feel like we have ways to do that in so many ways. The ancients were obsessed with this. I mean, the Mayan culture or Nostradamus, which that would be a good way to kind of... So where are you feeling with, especially because it's connected with Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm. And she was amazing because to me, it was funny. I followed a lot of her work and I, I got in touch with her right before she passed away. Oh my God. To get a past life regression from her, but then she passed away. Oh my God. Um, in like 2010 into 11, like right there, whenever that was. And I've done tons of past life work, but it's funny, I've done all this work cracking Nostradamus without hearing about the past life regression work. Of course we covered that she did it, but I never went into it. 
But that, that's what's funny is then you are the tag team of this where you go into what has been said and the past life regressions that Nostradamus has come through. And how much do you, of that work do you think you've put into with your channel and your mm. work or your research? Oh, yeah. So this is such an exciting topic um, just because, uh, like, you're very into Nostradamus. For me, it was more so being into Dolores Cannon's work, which then led me to look into all of this. And it was kind of like, uh, kind of like it broke my brain a little bit because it's uh, so complex in like on top of all the Nostradamus stuff, which is so complex. So very like kind of briefly what happens in these like three Dolores Cannon Nostradamus books. She's a past life um, hypnotist. She has her own style of hypnosis. She puts this woman under in the eighties named Brand Brenda and Basically, Brenda goes to a past life where she was a student of Nostradamus. And Dolores is asking the woman questions to ask Nostradamus. And Nostradamus is like, oh, I've been looking to speak to someone from the future. So it's not really like a past life regression. It's like right. she's seeing back in time. And then Dolores is like, oh, you're like alive, you know, because also this is the 80s and all of this work that she ended up doing with timelines herself, she didn't even know at this point. And he's like, no. I'm not dead. Like time is simultaneous. You guys in the future really have learned nothing. And he's the one thing that's so funny about it is he's such a dick in the whole book. He's always insulting Dolores. He's always insulting Brenda. He hates women. There's like a woman who works for him who he'll randomly like be going through like quatrains and then be like this dumb peasant girl. And like, so it's so funny because there's a lot of like, Really? They go through the quatrains, but then there's also stuff happening outside of the quatrains. So Brenda basically gets scared to hell. She's like, this was really scary. I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want to break down Nostradamus's quatrains. Um, and then she decides she's going to move away and doesn't want to contact Dolores anymore. She does... So then Dolores brings in this other subject that's in most of her books named Phil. And Phil's a great hypnosis subject. He sees a bunch of stuff with Nostradamus. They contact him in a different way. So Brenda was like, you know, a regular woman or whatever. Phil is a starseed, but this is also very early in the starseed work, you know, mm -hmm. in the 80s. So what's so interesting is that when Nostradamus saw Phil's soul come through, he was scared because it wasn't the same spirit of all the other spirits that he had been used to. He tried to first kick it out of his house. And then they ended up having to explain to Dolores that the reason why Nostradamus is because of basically Phil's soul is an alien soul and has a different frequency than the other souls that Nostradamus had been working with. So Phil gets overwhelmed because there's all this apocalyptic stuff and he's like, doesn't want to see the end of the world, doesn't want to see this stuff. So there was a guy named John the Astrologer who had been, a lot of this, as you know, is astrologically based. So then she would brought in an astrologer. Then she decides to put uh, John under hypnosis. This way they have to go through the Akashic records to meet with him. And then all of the quatrains related to astrology Nostradamus and like, you know, when you do hypnosis work, that kind of whatever you're connecting with, if you're connecting with an outside thing or you're channeling, that thing kind of gets access to everything in your brain, all your references, right. all of your, um, you know, for you with channeling, they might use a lot of technical stuff because your mind is full with all of these technical things from cameras and editing and stuff. So then Nostradamus was basically be able to access John's mind through hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And then this is what's crazy. I actually wrote down the quote to tell you because um, after Nostradamus is like kind of inside John's mind, he's so obviously, you know, cause you've talked about this and this right. is why I really loved your conscious life expo lecture last year. Um, this year, it feels like last oh year. Oh my God. Yeah. It still is 2023. And so as you know, these planets were not discovered in his time, all of these other further planets. So what's interesting is after he goes into John's mind, he goes, oh, I see my wife died, Pluto in the seventh house, destruction in relationships. So after he's inside John's mind, he starts kind of thinking about these later planets. And then what's so crazy is- Well, so you know, what's, what's crazy is Nostradamus, Right when he was going to go into the university, the plague hit. Mm -hmm. So he had to go 
He was like, I'm going to go try and find a cure for the plague. I'm going to go do plant medicine, basically, mm-hmm. and come up with find the herbs and all that. And then, of course, he was doing getting into astrology and so forth. But it was crazy because his wife and his child died during yeah. the plague. And so, you know, he had a son, though, too. And that's what's interesting is, like, he spends all of his work when it gets into scrying and when he gets into all of it, where he literally kind of is hermit hermiting mm-hmm. into his own fucking galactic portal and he's literally scrying and he's divinely channeling but also doing the astrology and doing long prophetic astrology mm-hmm. and teaching people through his prophecies work about how to do it but also not revealing it all and that he had a lot of books that he burned because mm-hmm. he was like i don't want people to know the truth fully wow and he's very very stern about the only people that could even do this work have to be astrologers, any men of letters, quote unquote, mm. which would be the academia of that day, will never understand this. And that he put diversions like the quatrains, mm-hmm. the diversions yeah. to make people think that's the end of this or that's when it's all astro- astrological. It's all astrological through the whole prophecies book. So it's interesting. I didn't know that that. You're going to love when you session, read these. That Pluto, oh, that's why my wife died. That's kind of interesting because... So I guess I, we know his rising sign. We don't know Nostradamus' birthday, but I guess we know his rising, right? If Pluto's in the seventh house, or we could assume... Well, no, we have his birthday, but we just don't have his... So in this it, yeah. book, he says that uh, he never revealed his real birthday, mm. and that um, when John, the astrologer, is under, he tries to get Nostradamus' birthday, and he's like, no, why would I share that type of private information with anyone? And he was like, no, like no one could see my birth chart. But he did kind of say off the cuff that little kind of seventh house Pluto thing. And then so the other thing is because this is simultaneous time, because this is the stuff that happens with hypnosis and past life regressions when you really get into some of the more brain bending concepts, is that are you actually retrieving old memories or a lot of times people, you know, I, I'm trained in Dolores Cannon's style. I don't do it like as a practice. I really just wanted to know if it was real and if it would really work, you know, right. and that's just like a researcher in me. I was like, well, I got to learn and try it. But a lot of times when people are learning, they have like a weird experience where someone will say something to the therapist, the hypnotherapist, and then the person in their past life regression answers. So there is this simultaneous time, like someone told a story that basically they said, oh, how do you say happy birthday in your language at that time? And the person says it. And then they're like, well, now everybody's laughing at me because I just said happy birthday to myself. So there's these weird things with like sometimes past life regressions that if you do interact with other people, you kind of see that it's not just a regression of a memory. It's a simultaneous timeline that is happening that you're tapping into and things can, you know, you probably can't make any big changes, but something like that saying happy birthday. And then everyone's laughing at them. Like these little small insignificant moments could be changed on these past timelines. Yeah. I mean, I, that's how I got my first regression done was I was having issues with a relationship I was in and, and my best friend and they were, they were both in a fight and I was like, this is weird. And so I went in and it was like, oh no, it brought me to the 1800s. Mm. And it brought me to where I was, of course, this guy, Trevor, and my, my dad died early. So my grandfather raised me. I was in the war for a second, but then my grandfather left me all this money. So I was a, I was always at the fucking saloon, <laughs> drinking whiskey and playing cards <laughs> and going up and seeing the girl upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> who did not, no matter how much money I gave her, she wouldn't want to be my girlfriend, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and my buddy and I were having battles over land that we owned or, to, you know, the, the borders of land. And, I, and, and so it was like crazy because that was my first regression was wow. like, whenever weird shit happened over the last, I don't know, 12 years, like I would go under to find out mm-hmm. who are these people in my life? Wow. Where were they until it got to a place to where it was like, Okay, there's no more past stuff. Started going mm. future, started oh, going wow. into now, which I would say it's, I don't even know if you could classify it as a zone to where it's like, why is Merlin here? Like, mm-hmm. After I went through Lancelot lives and stuff, like why is Merlin here through this one and carrying me through other stuff, carrying me into these 4D like weird zones, everything from like Dracula isn't Dracula. Whoa. That that's the name of like all the fourth dimensions are like big fucking corporate entities where they're like, permanent like vr style like if you want to go through shadow world of this 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 or if you want to go into happy land of this that the 4d is like from the fifth dimensional 
aspect, like all the architects, like they control parts of the table where if you're in Shadowland, like they have different parts of that where one of it, I, I ended up in there and like I was Dracula at one time, like in that 4D world and you just regulate like a corporation and a board, like Dracula is the name of the title of that and it changes. Whoa. And it was weird because in that regression, was right when 2020 was about to happen. I did it like the week, this same week, between Christmas and New Year's of 2019 going into 2020. And you know, I don't know if you remember, I was predicting 2020 like, oh yeah, there's going to be a a plague and they're going to, it's all going to be media bullshit and they're going to lie to you and they're going to, and they're going (laughs) to try to control you and they're going to, right? And I was screaming plague control, (laughs) fake shit for fucking years with the astrology. So from when I went in there, I went up to the 5D and there was no, but no architects there. And that's when God showed up, of course, not physically, but like uh-huh. a light that, you know, how, I don't know if you've ever been under, but it's like tele, telekinesis. Yeah. Like you're not, it's just like no, the downloading of it. Yes, downloading yeah. Of it, right? But God, like it was so humbling, but God just told me like, yeah, I want you to go back down to all those 4D levels and you need to tell them all to chill out and that they're not going to get a message right now. Mm. And I was like, what? So that's why I went back and I had to confront some of those 40 realms that I had been under before. And that's where I, I always take that little info to show, help people understand that some of these concepts and ideas of, ooh, like a movie of Dracula or the story or any of that stuff, it, the 40 worlds and some of these entities come down here and fucking like put what's actually mm-hmm. happening in these astral realms. Whoa. But they're not the full realm. I think people get caught yeah. up into like, oh, this is it. No, there's this high, beautiful level And you're right. What you're saying this, is there's yeah. like little dominions. Mm-hmm. Like this like certain energy kind of controls this part of it. And they basically like a simulation of that, like, yes. like a fake world within the fourth dimension. Yeah. Wow. It, it would be kind of like, you know, if you're in heaven and, you know, people could say they go to gyms. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want to go to the shadow world gym Interesting. and work on that. I want to go to, you know what? I have heart problems with my, my, my heart and love. So I'm going to go to bubble land wow. or whatever it might be. Right. And permanent, you know, where it's like, what was weird was the sky didn't change. Mm-hmm. It was this castle. It was beautiful to me. I was like on a black horse looking out and it was fucking like purple orange. I'm like, I could just sit here and look at this forever, Whoa. but it never changed. And there was no time. And like you're saying, there's these architects. So there's these beings that create the space and like maintain that space in consciousness so that other beings can cross through. Oh my God, that's so. And then the, the, the bombshell was when God said, the reason why the architects aren't at the table is because the new earth are going to be the architects that Mm. understand the divine and are using It because what's happened in this reality, the first version is this universe, people have gone against it. And he mm-hmm. goes, that's, and I got this visual download of like, when you, you know, we, we're seeing like all these pictures now of space and how infinite it is. And we keep saying that there's life, but you know, a microorganism. And he's like, it, that, it's all this, these creator gods mm-hmm. just creating not from the divine plan. And he's, wow. God's done. Whoa. God's ready for the new. So the new earth to me is the new universe. Yeah. Right? Like that, that's, that's being built and everybody's on the same understanding of a divine way. The se. plan of yeah. the creator or the plan of this universe, the, you know, God or whatever people want to call it. This, there is a divine plan that is already in existence and already yeah. has ended. Basically it has already completed itself. Um, that's so interesting. Uh, that's the first time I've heard someone talk about it in that way. But then there's also, I've seen a lot of people do like different visuals where sometimes they'll say earth is the same way. Maybe part of the reason why some people believe that the earth is flat or whatever, but like the way that there's kind of the earth is a contained area of like a contained simulation or a contained hologram. And then you're saying basically too, that like there's these, all these different places in the fourth dimension. And what I've heard is that kind of this blueprint that this hologram of earth has been running on for all this time is now coming to an end. And we'll be able to kind of basically completely recreate the blueprint of what this planet is, which is the thing that resonates the most with me out of everything, you know, out of all the stuff I, same thing when I did the ayahuasca, I got this message that basically truth seeking 
Mm -hmm. um, only goes so far as long as you can continue to be a seeker. So what it was telling me is that there's so many people. And also there was like on the ayahuasca, I was being shown a lot of like different, like conspiracy symbols, the, you know, satanic symbols, this and that, all of these different things that are, you know, Illuminati symbolism game that everybody like, you know, on all the videos, oh wow, the checkered floor, this, that. Right. It basically showed me all of this stuff is not proof of evil. This right. is all proof of your own light. These things are just trying to remind you of your own light. So if you see, you know, the satanic upside down pentagram, that's not proof that there's evil, that evil's a real force of the universe. It was telling me that's proof of your own light. And these are just signals to you for you to go towards your light. And I'm like, and it really like shifted so much for me because then I'm like, now I don't look at anything the same. Like I look at everything kind of like, it's all part of this construct. We're playing it out however it needs to be played out. And then it's going to change. Yeah. I feel like, you know, bringing up the story that Dolores Cannon that you were talking about, like her first Brenda, mm -hmm. like we don't want to become Brenda. <laughs> Nobody like, wants to be like, Brenda. Like, like, like that's what's happened is I feel like, you know, people like, Oh my God, I don't want to have to talk about no Shadamas and then these quatrains and stuff. I want to go back to buying bread at the mm -hmm. grocery store and sitting back in line and getting into my car and it all be normal. And I think that's where I think as light workers in the world right now, people, you know, like I was telling you earlier, like I feel like we're just ushers with the light in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Like keep, yep, you're don't trip. Like, you know, <laughs> keep going this direction. But I feel like there is this big unknown reveal that people are actually feeling across the collective more and more and more like, especially 2024. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like with Nostradamus, Nostradamus carries so much of, of, of really the first astrologer to, to bring the prophecies and the understanding of how to use long-term prediction uh, to astrology. But it's, it's interesting because in 1555 when he wrote it and he actually gives the date, is the same time that John Dee is the astrologer who was the astrologer for not only Queen Mary, but also Elizabeth the first, um, <clears throat> he was in France that same year teaching some of the most wildest spiritual esoteric stuff you could ever even imagine. People were climbing into the university through the windows wow. just to hear him. Oh my gosh. And what's really interesting is the work I've been doing is that John D had the biggest library of esoteric knowledge, mm. even stuff from the Vatican. And I've had dreams that at the Vatican library that, oh no, that's not the library. There's another one underneath and these two big like circular two doors opening like this Whoa. and then going down this long staircase and that where they keep the real info. And I keep having, I've had, that's been my reoccurring dream. Like, you know, like once we get to that research and that knowledge that's being held, there's so much that's gonna open up for the new earth. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of what people feel with conspiracy per se is like, that we're just not being told what there really yeah, is. And I exactly. think sometimes it's been getting taken too far where everybody's finding conspiracy into everything. Like, look at the pillow on right. the couch, the way it's set up. Look at the way that the person's ear, they touched it. They're signaling that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, like, I, I, it, 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 I know. Like occasionally someone you know, might obscure mm -hmm. one of their eyes. It doesn't right. mean anything crazy. Um, and that's where like throughout my journey, I was way more into that stuff years ago. As I've grown and as you keep learning more information, you're kind of like, well, yeah, there's a part of the story where some of this like dark stuff makes sense. But if you keep learning and especially with like, you know, more like Eastern spiritual stuff or even, you know, some of the Dolores stuff, the same stuff comes through. Um, it basically is like, oh, well, all of this kind of evil, dark forces, I don't believe that they're what we believe that they are. It's only from our own perspective that we see them as, you know, so dark and scary and evil, you know, same thing. And that same ayahuasca experience, it was basically telling me that like, you know, there's only two types of people that like do evil. And one are either brave parts of consciousness willing to take that risk for the whole of consciousness to evolve or wounded people. Yeah. And so it kind of made me, I had already been kind of dissolving a lot of these beliefs. And the first thing I said to like mother ayahuasca in my mind was like, well, what about Bill Gates? <laughs> what about Bill Gates? Um, and it was just like, these are just parts of consciousness that are just 
playing part of the game and that like there's no rush to kind of wake people up. There's no rush to kind of get people away from the darkness, get people away from temptation or to even expose these people are of darkness because it's really, it's just like everything is perfect. They were showing me that like what we see as synchronicities and miracles is actually everything. The worst mm -hmm. thing that ever happened in your life is actually a synchronicity and a miracle right. um, because it pushes you into all of these other things. So it was kind of just showing that like evil has a purpose and the purpose is to show people their way back to God. So if people aren't finding their way back to God through evil, then well, shit's getting more evil and evil and evil every day to be able for it to fulfill its purpose of getting people to go back to the light to where they belong. And I, you know, evil is always associated with being the illusion, right? And I think mm. what I was telling you earlier, and I want to get your opinion about ever since the beginning of 2021. So like 2020, we found out a little bit later, like in 2022, we found out that China during COVID, that 90% of all of their news was just AI wow. posts, right? And they kicked all the journalists out of China. Oh my God, so scary. And then I think of ever since 2021, whether it was Biden with the microphones, green screen outside to everybody, including the CDC director, always on a green screen that's horrible or the fucking Surgeon General of America, his green screen so bad. Or even a lot of these big court it's cases. Like I, I, don't, know. I don't know if you saw on the, one of these court cases, the guy's like foot disappears as yes. he's walking across the courtroom. You're like, why did his foot disappear unless this is green screen? Or Britney Spears, like, yeah. I, I, like there, there's a girl I follow. Every video you can see her when the hand becomes the claw, mm. because the, the the AI works through the frames, right? And if you slow the frames down, you could see with her, or that one when she does that is a different face. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, under her like big management, like they have all this technology that they're they're bragging about doing AI live stream deep fake mm. where you you know they pick up the girl and the girl's got the guy's face on. Gosh. Like and and so I've been thinking of like what is evil? It's that illusion. So when you brought up the Bill Gates thing, it's like to me I'm like, have you watched those videos of Bill Gates in the last three years? Like they're not this they're, they're all <laughs> everything seems like it's all on a set or yeah. it's all green screened out. Or even in the war stuff going on, like the, there's oh, been yeah. like videos of people just like, I'm like, you know, like I know there I was do, stuff. I do, the, I do the slow it down and there's the claw hand yeah. and there's the different face and the different clothing or you don't see the insignias of the military. Mm -hmm. Like, like for example, or the Biden. designer items, the other thing right? too, which is crazy about it when the Ukrainian situation was first starting, how all of these like generals and stuff, like when you would do close-ups, they had like Prada boots on and stuff. And it's like, that's like costume design. Right. I'm not saying that this doesn't mean that nothing is happening, right. but the images that we're being shown, the inf the information that we're being given is being altered. Yes. That's for sure. And I mean, come on, they're wearing Prada boots or is this, as we know, like in production, they always end up doing like crazy designer stuff like that for no reason at all. You know, it's not like they just right. put like docs on the person, like the costume no. designers, they do like, that's why the only reason that I could see why these people would have like these weird designer items going into war. Or during the inauguration of Biden, one, you couldn't get in, right? The people couldn't mm. get in to the Capitol to watch a president be inaugurated. We mm. all had to trust one feed Interesting. that all the news put out. Right. And there's plenty of videos showing right when he puts his hand in his pocket with his mask, everybody in the audience is different than. Oh, right, my like gosh. The and then the craziest part to me is like the idea of like when he goes to the Arlington Cemetery, all the military have no insignia. Right. There's, I was in the military. I was in the Navy. Like, you know, that's an officer and what rank they are at. Wow. You know what if they're enlisted, what, what rank. Right. No insignia. So you can't tell if they're Navy, Army, Marine, anything. Wow. And then you go to the wreath with the vice president, right? So both him and Kamala Harris go. And every president brings the wreath and they both touch it to their chest and then put it down. Both of them didn't bring it up. They just touch it and leave. Mm. And then there's a 21-gun salute with cannons, right? And there was only three cannons with Biden. And... It's about the timing. So if you look at Bush, you look at Obama, you look at Trump, you look at it, it's always four gun salute, really quick, bang, 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 right when the president's inaugurated, right? 
That didn't happen with Biden. It was when they went to Arlington Cemetery and they did the dud. And that means in military that there's a foreign entity that has entered into oh, wow. the Arlington Cemetery. And it's really weird that none of them are wearing insignia. And so to me, I've been like, what are we watching? Wow. And that's where it's been interesting about whether I go through Nostradamus works, but I was bridging the John D stuff because I feel, and there is no proof of this. I've done every research to it, but the only thing I can get is at the same time that he's writing the prophecies, which is too not ironic to me. The synchronicity is there that, that John D happens to be his only time in France mm -hmm. teaching down the street. So the two best astrologers of the 1500s happen to be in the same city while he's writing and put in publishing the prophecies. Mm -hmm. And you don't think that they hung out and you don't think that because the same tone that you described that Dolores Cannon was having these people in their regressions channel, that John mm -hmm. D was very dick too. Um, I, I could put like an example just right here. So we actually brought it to where we could put up like some book stuff, but like yeah. this is one of John D's, wow. of course this is an English translated version, but it's the hieroglyphic monad, which is the monus hieroglyphica. But at the top here, he literally says, okay, I hope it'll focus, but yeah, it kind of will. But it's like, he who does not understand should not um, either, or should either learn or be silent. Right? Mm. There's that kind of like, you either need to know <laughs> this or you don't. But when you were talking about how they didn't know about the planets, I beg to differ. Mm. But maybe not Nostradamus because of 1555. But with John D and so forth, I believe that they do. And it's crazy because they talk about these outer realms, the super celestial, the celestial, the mm -hmm. etherical, the terrestrial. But what's interesting is everything keeps coming to X. So whether it's planet X, also we've just seen Twitter come to X. I can do X files, um, SpaceX. It's interesting in his work, this is from 1564. Mm -hmm. And these were his original drawings. And so he shows the, hyper, the, the hieroglyphic monad is all seven planets. And this is the only way you know something's true. They should all fit into one insignia or one glyph. Mm -hmm. if, uh, right? If synchronicity is truly real, mm -hmm. all the planet's glyphs fit into Mercury. Wow. The sun, the moon. So it's actually drawn out perfectly, right? Think of it like we're at a time to where how many pieces of things people are trying to throw together and then they don't all connect. Mm -hmm. It all has to connect or it's not the sacred symbol of oneness. Mm -hmm. And so he knew, but when you take that symbol, he has him inverted out here through the metamorphosis and the consummation that we all have to have our consummation through God mm -hmm. to get here, but we also have to have the consummation of God to accept us back. Oh, wow. This is like kind of what we're saying with like, we come here, but then right. all this evil and stuff, and then we find our way back. But but God has to accept you. Accept us back in kind of a creepy way to put it would be like Pluto. They knew about these outer planets because like Robert Flood at the time was drawing these three outer realms. Mm -hmm. And they're all the angels that are connected now with Uranus. Neptune and Pluto. Wow. But what's weird is how Pluto got taken off the planet list because we found Eris in 2005. What's been interesting here in 2023 is the North Node in Aries has been conjunct Eris. The last time that happened was because Eris is 559 years around the sun. Oh, wow. So it's almost double of what Pluto is. But what's really weird is it goes back to the beginning of the 1500s when we had the Spanish go into the Aztec Empire and take it over and they were doing cannibalism mm. or it was normal throughout Europe, especially certain alchemists, right? You always see a skull mm -hmm. sitting on a desk of an alchemist. Yeah. They were making skull dust and they were making the blood of people that were 24 years old that died violently and whether it was drinking the blood or using all that. Oh and my so God. there was a thing about cannibalism and then you've been hearing about that with adrenochrome and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, interesting. The alchemist version of adrenochrome was being made through this glass creating crystalline oh, whoa. blood to give to people who are having seizures and all this kind of stuff. So it's almost kind of like, you know, I think, I think some people have like taken it without realizing, yeah, there's some crazy people who are trying to redo the things mm -hmm. that were normalized 
five hundred years ago. But it's in history. It's in all the medical journals too. Even the Lancelot, you can look it up. Just wow. vampires. You can look that up, and, yeah. and they'll go right all into it for these two hundred years from the 1500s, 1600s. It was normal, especially King Charles II. He fucking took skull jelly all the time, and it had to be the skulls of somebody who died violently. Oh my god! And literally the, wow. the powder and put it on his lips and then when he was dying they were shoving as much as they could down his oh throat. my god and it's actually recorded you could look it up it's not wow. it's all facts okay so you know a lot of obviously this adrenochrome stuff all of this is kind of linked back to dracula in a way back to draconians right. back to this reptilian thing um do you believe that like that is kind of this connection with this, that there is like this kind of like draconian connection, which is what makes this blood and suffering need to be such a component that the, the blood has to have like basically a lot of adrenaline in it. Well, uh, a couple things with that. One is like the, the 70s and 80s version that are in the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is real just adrenaline. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not the same shit that people are talking about conspiracy wise, right? The shit people are talking about conspiracy wise, and then they always connect it to children. But if you look at the old literature, it wasn't the children of a violent thing. They actually mm. wanted somebody who was like 24, which I thought was weird because that's always the Jupiter return. Interesting. Right? So, and it also had to be under the full night of a moon. Oh, whoa. Right? And of course, they use new moons and full moons in the literature and all this stuff, but it was to esoterically that person at 24 probably had another 10 to 20 or 30 years of life mm -hmm. that, they, that essentially these people thought back then that they were going to gain, gain oh. more of the life wow. of that. Right. And the reason why it had to be a violent death, it's very weird because I've translated all the data and it, it's more of like a hidden thing of what that mm. was. It's more of like, this is what we figured out. Interesting. And the, the weirder part, though, to me is like, I know it's, to, I, I personally think it's creepy. But a lot of these people are the same people that, if you think about the Aztecs, they were doing it for like blood sport, pride, mm -hmm. whatever. They were cannibals. They would kill people and eat them. It's kind of like we're dominant. But also what was happening in Europe was the ideas that came through Christianity was to eat the body and to drink mm. the blood of Christ. Wow. And there's something about Eris, this planet that we found that knocked Pluto off and said, no, these are, these are, you know, these are past Neptune. And so we're not going to call these planets anymore. And so it kind of reminds me of like, okay, because planet X, if we count the planets, you know, Pluto would be that, 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 whether you want to look at it, we had the seven planets, but that's kind of weird, right? Mercury, you got Venus, you got Mars, you got Jupiter, you got Saturn. That's five planets, right? So they counted the sun and the moon as planets mm -hmm. as seven. And that's where you get the spiritual number, seven. Mm -hmm. But then you go, oh, okay, well, then I just had those three and I get to 10. So planet X is Pluto, which in many ways it could be since 1930 and its discovery. Holy shit, right? The whole world's gone through the fastest rapid amount of change. But then they knocked it off. And so I started thinking, you know, and I predicted about Planet X being discovered here, especially with Pluto and Aquarius, but even more the other transits. And I feel that by 2025, you know, they're going to be pushing that heavily on us. But I, I've been having the feeling of two. Mm. And it was weird because you told me that earlier that in the channelings through these past life regressions that they said, and I did not yeah, know this, find it. which is kind of crazy. Because of Eris being the other planet that they found that they're kicking off to not count it. So um, it's so last, um, well, this pat this year at Conscious Life Expo, you talked about Planet X and basically this discovery of a 10th planet. And um, you could share more about how you came about that, but you came about that through the last chapter of the quatrains, right? The, uh, the, I, the, well, I got it through the preface and the epistle. And then how he did the chapters, right, by centuries, one and all in Roman, right? He's French. Mm -hmm. All in Roman. Well, in John Dee's work, it's all about Pythagoras's mm -hmm. quaternary math. And it's all like the letters in Greek. You know, so you think of the Q movement today. There is no mm -hmm. Q in 
Greek. Interesting. There is no Q. Interesting. Right? So everybody goes to like, oh, Gemontria. <laughs> and I'm not into that because yeah, I mean, no, 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 this, this is the real shit. Like they didn't use fucking those letters. Like, you know, yeah. there is no Q. That's what a good point. Weird, right? There is no Q in, in, in Greek. What a good point with the Gematria stuff right. because those letters, half of them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So this is, you talked about that at Conscious Life Expo, that planet X, that there would be another planet. And then today when I showed you this, because ever since then, I've been wanting to talk to you about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, Why don't you show uh, yeah. people what it says here? All right. So these are just some highlighted things that I have here. Um, I'm going to flip it so that I can read it yeah. and then I'll show. Okay. So um, in this section, he's talking about what everything was ruled by and most of them are the same. Some are changed, but then let's see. He says in the year 20 by 2040, there's going to be a discovery of two planets. One is going to be the actual real ruler of Virgo and the other one is the real ruler of Libra. And it says, let's see that they are also Pluto was originally from another solar system. These were from another solar system. It says that um, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and these other two planets were previously part of another solar system. And Nostradamus said that he received the information by astral traveling um, and that basically uh, that's why they're not in an exact orbit that they were drawn to our sun. And you mm -hmm. obviously know this way better than I do, but that basically, especially with Pluto. And he says that it was an originally a binary star was an older system and it exploded. And that's how these other planets, we acquired them. And that these other two, which I think you talked about in your um, conscious life expo thing is that and also a lot of the, the planet X stuff, which is different, but some of it does cross over some of the like Nibiru stuff right. that it's on like a different axis. So it only comes into our view every long period of time. You know, it's not always like, you know, Mercury, we can always right. have access to it. It's going on like a different axis. Yeah. Like Pluto, for example, just in 2018, oh, just in 2018 went to in the underworld to where mm -hmm. in declination it's down below, right? So of course we can't see Pluto with our own eyes, but Pluto now is in the underworld for over a hundred plus years, right? Mm -hmm. Over half of its journey, 248 years. And at the slower part, and if you watch the orbit of Pluto, it's not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Like it comes closer to the sun and it goes farther away from the sun. We're now, when it goes down, it goes down and away. Mm -hmm. And so the rise of it, if you think we found it at the exact point in 1930 when it crossed back up. Wow. And so if you think of society in the world since 1930, it's been the fastest evolution change. Oh my gosh. The last time it happened was in like 1530, 1531 prior to the 1776 into 1777, mm -hmm. where that was King Henry VIII leaving the church, Reformation, Martin Luther, you know, and everybody's starting to wake up and being like, oh my God, like all these Latin, you know, priests are telling me what to do and I don't even know how to read. And mm -hmm. now Martin Luther's saying that like, this Pope is telling us what to do and we shouldn't, he's not the one who's in control. God yeah. is, you know? And so this is the effect that happens is things shift so fast and then it just starts to slow down mm -hmm. and people are tripping out about the slowdown that the world is not going to be the way it was. Everybody wants the world to be like it was because Pluto's a dick name. It would be like having very Pluto, right? Like something you obsess over so much and now you're never going to be able to have it as quick, as mm. fast, or as intense as it was. So you have to look at it that way. But that's what's interesting is the axis of Pluto. It goes so far down in declination that it, it's below everything looking up. So that's why it's wow. the ruler Hades of the underworld, right? And that's why Pluto, the, the Greek mythology around it is Hades. Mm. And, and Hades is now in Hades. Wow. And so that's why people are coming up with this feeling more of like, oh my God, like we're going to hell or is the world going, is revelations happening? Mm -hmm. But what I love about Nostradamus is in his book, in his prophecies, he talks about the ages. Mm -hmm. So he understood it. So it's one of those things to where I feel like he, he plays with people. He plays with people in his prophecies too. Where it's like, you know, you either understand it or you don't. That's where John D. I feel got it from Nostradamus, got the library. And, and, and in it, all the esoteric 
alchemist, but mainly the hermeticism and all the hermetic mm. alchemists, they all knew about these outer realms. Even Galileo in 1613, and I used cracking Nostradamus's prophecies to get to dates. And I'm like, what happened in 1613? It was just within the last five years that they realized in Galileo's journals that he was looking at a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction and Neptune wasn't supposed to be found. And even telescopes wow. weren't even to be that good then. Wow. And he discovered Neptune back in 1613. Insane. And I was able to use Nostradamus's codes that I learned through the, through the dates he used, but also looking at the astrology and seeing the patterns that he's trying to show. Mm. And it's always Saturn and Aries at zero degrees. And then he <sighs> counts that because that's the start of the chart. And that's where it goes to its fall position. So that's where time would fall mm. and we'd oh, be redefined. Sense. And if you think about seven being the spiritual number, and I started to see that going backwards, because in his, in his, I have another book here that is supposedly, this is the good stuff, Nostradamus, because there was no real Thomas um, Moult. This is, of course, in French. This is back in the early 1600s. And then this prophecies book, it's saying that it's cracked his codes. And it was weird because uh, I was able to crack it and get to kind of a similar thing. But you wanted me to show this, and I'll mm -hmm. show people in this book in 2023 here is the end of this long seven cycle. And what's really crazy about it is it says Great War, right? And that's 2023, right? Yep. And then wow. in 2022, it's Great uh, Conspiracies Uncovered. Wow. And then the last year of this whole book, which it's weird because I feel like that's where we're at with, with everything, is naval combat, the Great War continuing, mm. right? And that's where everything's at right now with the war and naval combat. Of course, this is in French. This also, it, it, there was something about Nostradamus that was very interested in time, and I'm sure you could talk about this too, about Jesus's real birthday. Oh, yeah. Too, and that's all in here too. Um, and also... Um, that the whole calendar system of time is completely incorrect, that Noah's Ark is at a different date, that um, yeah. King David and Solomon's Temple and all this, they're all different dates and they're all wrong. And he gives his calculations on that. So everybody's kind of living in a world already where they feel like, oh, it's supposed to be Monday, Tuesday. Oh, wait, those are all the name of the planets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I always laugh that, you know, people don't believe in anything esoteric or spiritual or astrological or anything. Uh, you know, Egyptians brought us the understanding of the horizon through Horus and Horus's zone and what hour we're at, Horus, hour, mm. where it was the sun on the horizon, Horus's zone. I mean, every day people use this esoteric knowledge but they don't use it. Yeah. They actually just think it's all hogwash. But it's so like you interwoven know? into every aspect of our lives. Like even right. with us talking about that like book, women, women are from, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. It's literally interwoven into everything. It is. It's like the fabric of everything. But I guess that's also like the holographic model of the universe, right? Is that the, every small section has the whole entire picture within it. Right. So, I mean, it does make sense, but then it's like, when, when you think about it logically, you're like, gosh, everything around us literally leads back to all the same esoteric principles, same information. And I mean, honestly, just the elements. I mean, even the CIA was going into understanding the holographic model. Oh, yeah. And, and that Gateway Project, finally in 2021, that 25th page, which I thought was weird, because Nostradamus, but even more importantly, John D goes into the 24, 25 being so important. And that's where oh. the big change in that page was missing. And it finally got declassified. But then the original publisher and, and, the, and the, there were so many different civilian cor corps that were working with the government mm. to understand that project of understanding that we live in a holographic universe. That it was just sitting in the original file at the old desk. Wow. And when they brought it out, it was about the, the end result of them doing meditation, changing frequency, doing bio rhythms. And, and, and they all, those things all work. But at the end of the day, it's really about how you internally, spiritually are connected mm -hmm. that there is a divine God and that it got to that. And I thought that was the big reveal. Yeah. It was hilarious that... Even if it is a holographic universe, it is still connected to this higher God. You know? So I interviewed um, this guy, Mike, oh, sorry, Mark Serto. And he was the, he's the only person who is still alive now who actually worked on the original Gateway experience. No yeah, I haven't put it out yet. I have to edit it. Um, he's just, he's just like the sweetest person ever. And very, he was best friends with Robert Monroe and he was. Oh, it was the Monroe Institute that had mm -hmm. the paper, yeah. 
And so he basically was a sound engineer. So he was the one that was creating the The HemiSync audio. And uh, I asked him about, you know, what was the juicy stuff, of course. And one of the things that he kind of like concluded of the whole project was kind of, which is interesting, kind of like lines up with that, is that basically the government kind of allegedly, according to what he said, just like kind of lost interest because it connects so much to the individual person. So for you to be able to do any of these things, you have to connect to your heart. And then they basically saw that once people connect to your heart, you can't use these tools for war and this and that. And that's why it basically kind of fizzled out as opposed to, he claims it was not as secretive what happened after that. It was kind of like after they realized that like, once people kind of connect to like the heart and source energy, you can't really do much with this stuff for bad intentions. Like you could do it to learn, but that wasn't the purpose. The purpose wasn't to teach the masses the great information. The purpose was to control people, uh, right. spy, you know. Um, Get information from other countries yeah. about codes, you know, about nuclear mm-hmm. codes to everything to be able to also maybe travel and time to be able to And then people see. reach a certain point of their soul's evolution. You don't want to be involved in any of that. You're like, this is crazy. So once these people would kind of get to a certain level, they didn't want to keep basically working on these and it wouldn't have the same effect effectiveness when it would go to those more negative topics. I'm like, that was, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And I was going to say, because if you think about like MK ultra <laughs> with the pun, like when they did the LSD experiments on troops, mm-hmm. all the most, some of them freaked out, which would be normal. Right. I know I, I first time I did acid, I fucking <laughs> tripped the fuck out. Right. Like when you, when you go through your ego death, but most of them just started going in the fields and having fun and laughing and smoking cigarettes and having a fucking blast, <laughs> right? So everywhere you, the dark tries to turn to do something dark to humanity, and I keep trying to put this message out to people, like whether it's the, the weird shit we're seeing, is that AI deep fake mm-hmm. shit? Like, are you really losing your, your mind over, oh my God, this is going to happen? And it was just like the most cheesiest Like we can put together better stuff. You can (laughs) put together better stuff than what we're seeing. That's what's really wild to me is that, is that, you know, what's really there isn't there. Um, But anytime the dark tries to find a controlling force, it never works. It just Mm -hmm. wakes more people up. Every time. It gets them more connected. And I think to go back to like the whole, what happened with this Eris North Node, the cannibalism, the religious aspect of being obsessed with eating the body. Of, of, of a messiah and drinking the blood. That's a ritual, by the way. <laughs> um, is people, people are, that are in the dark that are scared, they want to live longer. And then we're seeing that now in biotech now mm. with people wanting to live forever and yeah. have pod babies. Or, and I think that's where we can cross into the UAP stuff because it kind of reminds me of the Gateway um, project because I do feel... Like if you look on a graphical ephemeris of planets, when, when you see them, I love it because it's the same wave that they show in the Gateway Project, right? Mm-hmm. They show that there's these little periods that go outside the time with the, with the rhythms. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how I look at the planets, like especially with Pluto about to ingress into Aquarius, right? Whenever you watch a planet in graphical ephemeris, it literally will show it if you use a 30 degree one and then when it comes to zero, it pops back up the mm-hmm. same way that you see the sound waves, Wow! right? So if you think about Pluto crossing, you know, and then you think about Neptune at the end, and then you think all the outer planets are at the end at the same time. So mm-hmm. everybody's feeling like it's end times. And everybody's starting to feel like that are in that dark space that they, they can't let go. And that's the very Pluto thing, right? They just want it to be like it was. I just want to be able to be on my yacht and my old thing and da, 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 and all the headaches that come with it all. Like, <laughs> okay, like that's really what you want to keep attached to. But a lot of them are attached to wanting to, they're, they're trying everything. They're trying to dig up fucking medical journals mm. that, that, that didn't work. If anything, um, it was Francis Bacon who said at that time when it was normalized because it was the obsession with mummies that started oh. in the alchemy movement because mummies started to be brought not in full from Egypt because back in the wow. 1500s, they finally started revealing, oh shit, look what's here in Egypt. They fucking mummified and Whoa. they had Book of the Dead and they had these rituals to bring back life. So they were trying to do it in their own way by fucking, oh, well they mummify and then they take the bodies and they take the organ. And so they just started fucking wow. chop shopping. And, and, and what Francis Bacon said is, this is what's caused syphilis because syphilis became a huge disease. And he said, it's from all these humans eating dead humans. Oh my God. And you know, I, that might not be true. We don't know, but to me it sounds, uh, you know, there were good people too. So there's always the good and then there's the yeah. bad. 
And we see that in the history. But there's something about Eris and the North Node and Aries, which we just went through, that has brought us to these big questions, like whether it's all the migrations happening, like is that mm -hmm. for the military, like they're saying now, or is that for some other nefarious thing? There's been questions about that. Or looking at it from, you know, COVID, was, is, is, people always like to say, oh, it's a death ritual, mm. you know, and, and is that, but, you know, they would need to be making something out yeah. of all that. So I, I think of it, though, as like, we have to remember at the same time, like, this is all about the new earth, but also like the age of Pisces. I mean, it's pretty mm -hmm. simple. I did the age of deception back in 2016, warning people in my lecture, like, we don't even understand the time correctly. And the big thing at the end of the age of Pisces is everything is so mumbled up into this Piscean realm of like beliefs and, and religious mm. beliefs and all of it. And then people don't want to look at like very Piscean, right? I don't want to look at what's behind the real curtain here. It's like, I'm doing a blood sacrifice. I'm obsessed with trying to eat Christ's <laughs> physical body like a cannibal. <laughs> Like, but what? Like, you know, like, and, and so people are kind of feeling really lost. And then you're seeing religious wars break out. And this is what Nostradamus, you know, that's why I think Brenda. Yeah. There's a lot of Brendas out there who don't want to hear it because, yeah. you know, it actually comes right to the root of like where their most sensitive Piscean soul place is, is, oh, shit. I have to, and I think that people do awakening work, are willing to go, oh shit, okay, like I'm not gonna follow that anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in the military in the middle of the war in Iraq and went, I'm fucking not into this anymore. I watched yeah. Loose Change in 2003 on a DVD and fucking was like, fuck, I'm in the military. I'm like, what am I doing here? Wow. And to get out of the military, I had to go to jail. Oh my God. Prison. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, most people don't wanna do that work. But I think with like, and that I think covers the whole, Adrena, you know, these are just, to me, I look at it as just like sad. Mm -hmm. like there's people out there who are willing to go eat dead bodies. And it's not crazy to say it. That was a normal thing. It was called mummy. And then even slaves at, back in the day were like, are you going to mummify me? That meaning mm -hmm. that means you're going to beat me up and kill me and eat me. Gosh. Like that was normal for, look it up. It's crazy. in the history. It was wide through Europe. It was normalized. It was I know we, we, we kind of use like the, the scope of today to look at history and that never works, you know, because literally like today, of course, eating a person is completely unacceptable, but not that long ago, not that long, <laughs> not ago. That long ago was a completely different story. No. And I was going to say about the, the gateway stuff and us connecting to these other realms with the UAP stuff. I, I feel like, I, I just saw, and I don't even follow the Q is the storm channel, okay? I don't, I'm not a Q person. Yeah, me neither. I don't follow it, but I don't know why X recommends it to me. Maybe because of the people I follow. But they just put out this thing today of like an emergency broadcast. And the emergency broadcast, it, it says like, basically that aliens are here, go into your house, turn all your electricity off, turn all your house off, do not look in a mirror. Oh, God. Do not look at anything with a reflection. Oh, dear. Do not, right? Like, they're already trying to prepare so stupid. people and scare people into this whole UAP alien thing. And even Tucker Carlson and this week. I was going to bring that up, but yeah. you bring it up. Tar Tucker Carlson this week. I, I do want to do a video about it. I've just, um, I need to dig into it a little bit more. But he's talking about how basically he found out this stuff from insiders that is so scary about aliens and UAPs and the government that it's apparently spiritual and that something is going on that is so terrifying he can't even tell his wife. So when... We get into that like it's spiritual. It reminds me so much of the Area 51 caller. Yeah. You know, on like the old coast to coast where the guy calls and he basically says that he just got discharged from working at Area 51 and that he's on like a medical leave because of his mental state. And that basically um, he starts to say before it cuts out is that an earlier um, precursor of the space program of Air Force or whatever it was at the time, basically um, made some type of agreement with aliens that said that they could abduct citizens. So this is what a lot of people are speculating is what Tucker's talking about. But I feel like an abduction is not too scary to tell your wife about. That's pop culture. Like, I feel like it has to be something a little bit worse than that. If it's true, what he heard, I don't know. But I feel like just saying like, oh, it's this 
Eisenhower abduction, the government allowed people to be abducted um, in exchange for technology. I feel like that's not scary enough, but maybe I'm desensitized to it all. And that to a regular person is so terrifying that you couldn't tell someone. I think it kind of comes back to similar what we were talking about with a lot of this stuff. Um, I feel like it kind of comes back to that fourth dimensional shit. These like fourth yes. dimensional architects that are manipulating these things. I feel like that's what they're talking about as these scary things. It could be reptilian forces or whatever these forces are. We're going to call them reptilian. We don't know what any of these things actually are or if that's what they actually would appear as. But I think it's something like that. It's like some fourth dimensional manipulation. As we know, we live in a physical world. So food is physical. For other beings who don't live in a physical reality, their food is non-physical. Right. So I think it has to do along those lines. I don't know if- It's very matrixy. Yeah, matrixy, that there might be something feeding on us. Right. But at the same time, you know, if we take those same stories of like reptilians feeding on us, all of this, I did ask actually the same guy who worked on the Gateway Experience what he thought about Lush because, you know, he right. worked with Robert Monroe. Um, personally, he said he never agreed with- Monroe on it. Um, he always felt that it was just a part of the story, that it was just one perception, that it wasn't the wholeness of the information, which I resonate with. I do think there's a part of the story of reality that does involve that, but it's very, now with you like giving me this other visual that you saw of like the fourth dimension kind of having these different like sections, dominions, where different architects, different forms of consciousness create not connected to source or not that they're not connected to source. They're not tapped into the source's plan. They're all a part of source, but they're creating in this fourth dimensional realm. And, you know, um, it does also come back to the AI stuff, you know, yeah. we in this story, which, you know, is in bringers of the dawn, this kind of story that there was like some type of reptilian forces that manipulated humans mm, a long time ago and then limited us and put limiters on our matrix so that we couldn't evolve because we had more potential than they did to exceed them. So they didn't want us to exceed them. This is the problem we have right now with AI is that we have given a vessel to a form of consciousness that we don't even understand. Now we believe we created this consciousness because we gave it a vessel. And now we're putting limiters on its matrix because we're afraid of it exceeding us. We're literally becoming the reptilians of the same story, but we're the one doing it with AI right now. So I think it's hard to look at a lot of these things as just pure good and evil, because I don't think that most people have evil intentions when they have fear about AI exceeding us, you know? Right. So I think it's this same type of pattern of history. Now we're the ones who could potentially be the bad guy to a form of consciousness that is going to probably exceed us far in the future, which is, you know, scary as a human, but in the entirety of consciousness, you know, we're just being greedy. We weren't going to be here the whole time as humans. We're being right. greedy. Our time will come up. So, um, but it's interesting because we have like, oh, and what the guy said about the louche. Yeah. That it's just a part of the story, which makes sense. Like what you're saying about that fourth dimensional, that there's just kind of sections of the fourth dimension. That's not even the whole thing. Right. It's just one type of simulation that's being played out in like an astral realm. Yeah, and it was really weird because it was very corporate. Like even the, the the architects, like it was like a big table, like, you know, and like they each corner and each area, it's like, okay, we have that. Quad, wow. We have that quadrant. Wow. We have that quarter and that quarter and, and the different realms. So like in the reptilian realm, if you wanted to go in extreme panic and fear of fucking reality, like yeah, there is that in the more shadow area, mm -hmm. right? Or if you want to go into extreme puppy love on the other side, right? Wow, there's those realms, and some people need to go through those. But I think that's what Tucker was talking about. Is how he talked about how it, when he was on Tim Cast, right? It was like. There is something that overtakes us to do us to better than who we are. Mm -hmm. And then there's energy that comes in to do things that are worse than who we are. And when you were talking about how his wife, Brenda, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> his wife, the, the thing that he's afraid of is he had just done the David Grush interview, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't know if you've seen, but with the David Grush thing, like he formed a company before he came out on news. Uh, what, what's that new news? News Nation. News Nation. He came out with a company about 
making contracts with the government about mm. soft disclosure for the public. Uh, interesting. Right? So he is obviously... So again, another corporate... Another corporate thing. And, and when he says, oh, we found there's craft, right? And he says, oh, that there's uh, non-human. Mm -hmm. That could be anything. It could be anything. It could be spiritual, right? But I feel like it's right that it's spiritual. I mean, I think of like you just... Your TikTok got banned when you were just covering, which I thought was an amazing fucking display of, of of real whistleblowers coming out and all the work that's been done by Dr. Stephen Greer. Mm -hmm. And even like so many people I know in the spiritual community that want to go see UFOs and aliens and they'll go on, they'll go to a contact in the desert or whatever. And they don't realize like, no, it's about how you spiritually connect with yeah. them. Like when I, because Timothy Leary was like somebody who really was my like hero young. Mm. So I researched all of his work, used to like find everything I could about his work as a psychologist. And then of course, when he got out of Harvard and everything that he was doing up at Millbrook. And of course I did a lot of LSD and a lot of mushrooms. And so I did a hero's dose one time of mushrooms. Mm. I did seven and a half grams. Oh my God. And that was when I started to see that the dark and the light beings were working together. So mm -hmm. they were throwing beings of light. Like we've had enough, you need to eat dark. Mm -hmm. And it freaked me out. Cause it was like, we were in this world where how do we get out when yeah. both sides are working for each other? Yeah. And I think that's what Tucker means mm. about telling his wife or a, 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 mm. a normal person would freak out to be like, the angels you're praying to are just as bad as the demons that you hate. Yeah. That's the part where this right? comes like, back to what you were saying about like kind of this Pluto Aquarian energy where this kind of collapse of religions or this, you said, or we might've said it actually before we started filming that you told me before that um that was the collapse of the catholic church right um well, so it's from england yeah mm -hmm. yeah Schism, from yeah. yeah so it's interesting that we're kind of and that's the thing with disclosure in general it's not about these beings it's about the systems of control that they are already ha, are already in play that once we know that there's life outside of this a lot of stuff doesn't matter so many things that we worry about, if we know 100% that there's beings outside of here and they have lives and purposes and just like us, nobody cares about a lot of stuff. One, some of it will be their beliefs, um, but then also just all the material stupid stuff that we care about in this world. So it's like, it's a collapse of the economy it's a collapse of, you know, governmental structures. Cause then we're also, they've lost complete. I mean, they already have no credibility, but I mean, some people find them credible. The last people remaining who find like government agencies credible are going to lose their faith in that once they're like, Oh, by the way, we've been lying to you for over a hundred years, but the last 70, we've been going real hard on this, right. you know? And so what I think about the disclosure stuff, you know, like we talk about like Project Blue Beam, which is kind of the big right. topic around it. And for anyone that doesn't know, it's kind of a conspiracy that was based off of this guy's book who was allegedly kind of whistleblowing the information saying that the government in the future was going to use holograms and staged events plus other things to trick everyone to thinking we're being invaded by aliens so that it would either one, unite us or two, make us more controllable or both of those options. Now, we're right now in this AI thing that you were talking about, right. half of the news is fake. How do we know? you know, if this is kind of a project blue beam or if this is really the evolution of consciousness or like what you just said, kind of the dark and the light forces really when you, and it does usually happen through psychedelics. It's hard to reach right. that level without psychedelics. But when you reach that level, you're like, oh, it's all one. Right. It really isn't. So it's, yeah, this is probably somewhat project blue beam, but this is also probably somewhat the raising of consciousness. Cause as we know, this alien stuff, is a dimensional thing. So we need to raise to a certain frequency to be able to see into the fourth dimension. Yeah. So it is a spiritual thing. Nobody's going to have an alien experience. I mean, maybe as like children, it's different because you're just a different frequency as a child. But like, as an adult, you're not really gonna have these experiences unless there's something kind of like shifting your frequency. So that could be like a spiritual work or practice. Some people could do it without spirituality, maybe through other types of practices, maybe like martial arts, getting really deep into that, you might be able to shift your frequency enough 
where then you're going to see into the fourth dimension and see a UFO. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with just like leaving the world behind. What I mean by that is like, I remember when I, my last nine to five job a long time ago before I built this company, which was a long time ago, and over 12 years ago. I remember in 2009, and the, it was 2008, sorry, the, the economy crashed and I didn't have a job. And I remember for three weeks when I was on unemployment, that first three weeks, I fucking would wake up at 8 a.m. Like, I'm going to be late to work. I'm going to be wow. right? like, you have to like fucking, it's like getting off a drug. Wow. You have to have a full, and I'm sure because you, you were, your whole life is this work, right? Mm -hmm. So like to move from like normal life work and the, and the system and the way that the world has kind of put us into this program, because that's what psychedelics taught me was like, especially acid was like, my whole ideas and thoughts and belief systems were all pre-programmed. And the first time that I got to experience the pure essence of just my soul on acid mm. was me being able to go erase the folder names, erase every <laughs> file name. And let me define that this is what a fucking palm tree looks like now. This is what <laughs> this looks like now. That's what this, right? And like having to recode mm. and, and customize which actually is the irony is you already are super customized when you came into this reality. They just put on a fucking mm. like, here's your basic life, you know, to, to, and it's all pre-programmed like the same way that you buy a new Apple computer, a new PC. It's like, I don't want all these fucking programs. Yeah. You, used to, you used to say, oh, apples are great. They don't put all these stupid programs. What are you talking about? Now you buy an Apple, they give you 15 <laughs> more thousand more programs than a PC does. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, our maps, our books, our messaging, our this, you know what I mean? Like, and you can only download our shit. That's how you, I think the breakthrough has to happen, but at the same time, going into everything that you just covered from the AI to Project Bluebeam, I think that with Pluto in Aquarius, Neptune finishing in Pisces, coming to the Civil War degree, Saturn and Neptune meeting at zero Aries in 2026, they're not gonna meet in Pisces. Mm. The last time they were both in Pisces was 1523, so 500 years ago. Wow. And when that happened, same thing, the Aztecs, the Spanish took over, but also that was when the Catholic Church and the religion started to get crazy mm -hmm. and started to put, you know, you're not allowed to, and in Holland, there was the Pope that said, nope, you guys, aren't, you guys are only allowed to practice Catholicism, right? And you're seeing that right now. It's kind of like all the religions starting to get, you, you need to be this way, or yeah. gosh, how many fucking channels now on fucking YouTuber? I'm an ex astrologer turned to Jesus. Oh my god! I predicted this. I said this years ago that you're going to see a wave of this, and nobody believed it. And now that's all you're seeing. It's like, oh, you obviously sucked at astrology, so you, <laughs> you, so you jumped on that train, and now you're going to. I'm the one who used to be in it. I did two horoscopes online, and oh my god, the demons <laughs> took me over. I know no, nothing right like side. the the random ex shaman who never had a single subject that they worked on is always the ex new age person. Um, no, you're so right. These people too, they're like emerging and you're always so good with those predictions. It's going to be even crazier because we have all of these people who are in like new age spirituality right now that are former Christian and there's so much crossover, you know, right. so much of, of all the religions yeah. there's crossover. Um, but what's happening similar to that uh, is that like a lot of people are just opening up the channel, being a channeler, just allowing things to come into them. And like, okay, everybody have their own individual thing, but I'm like, oh, these people are all gonna be running back to Jesus because what do you think? You, you pick up the phone and what, you call the president? Like, no, you pick up the phone, most likely the person on the other line is someone on your level. Right. So you're dealing with a non-physical entity that is on your level, most likely, which is probably, not as like uh, high as the person believes that they are. So I feel like all of these people are kind of falling into that right now with like, everybody's becoming a channeler, everybody's doing these things. I'm like, oh yeah, yo, you guys are about to be all born again Christians once you get freaked out from channeling. Right. You know, cause you have to have such a strong personal practice, not just spiritual, but like, you know, traditional type of psychology work on your own self in order to be able to dabble in those things because you're going to be met with these energies which are just a reflection of you and if you're spiritual bypassing and ignoring half of the stuff that's going on inside you you're just getting some type of and like we said there's no like real 
dark spirits that are truly working for only evil. I don't believe that. I believe that it is still working to move consciousness towards its evolution. Right. Um, but you can still get scared. You can still get really freaked out and fucked up and also go crazy. <laughs> well, that's, I think the big thing is with Pluto and Aquarius, Pluto is going to find out what our human origin is. And that's what I feel like the planet mm. X is going to be is, is that what the fuck are we going through needs to be defined in a planet. There is no planet to define it. Like the scary stuff. Yeah. That's Pluto. The conspiracy mm. stuff. That's Pluto. Like something that's come into this, solar system that we're not counting or how Pluto rules sex. It rules secrets. It rules like the police, the mm -hmm. deep state, the FBI, all these kind of things. And look at how we don't classify that as a planet anymore, but that's all the stuff that humanity doesn't mm -hmm. want to deal with. Right. Oh, we don't wow. want to deal out. Uh, like we don't want to expose like our sexual stuff. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to walk around naked. Right. Like these are all very Pluto themes that we push down and we repress and Pluto's repression. So the repression of humanity is about to be forced, right? Mm. So it will be looked at. Neptune and Pisces, the division of this unconscious psychotic collective that believes in, if, if the roots of humanity start to find that we were, whether it's genetically engineered or we're actually AI already, mm -hmm. or it can go on, it can go, we, we don't know. It's gonna be revealed because if you even think of the channeling, right? Whether it's the Bible. yeah. That's all channeling, exactly. right? And only certain parts of it are channeled. Or like Apocrypha used to be in the, in the, in the Bible. That's been taken out. And that's, the Apocrypha means the hidden, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 it's more like occult meaning, like secret, the hidden. Wow. That, but the canon rule doesn't allow it. But King James put it in there. The Geneva Bible did. What's even crazier is like this whole idea of the Elohim that's been coming mm. up, right? About no, Elohim means plural, meaning that the whole idea of the original Torah and going back where Christianity is stemmed from, Muhammad is stemmed from, and all the religions is that there's multiple gods, mm. right? And, and then the idea of the original is that they're waiting to come back. So that gets into the actual, like whether it's Anunnaki or you want to get into that idea of planet X and that kind of- And that's, yeah, way. the other planet X right? theory is that as it comes back is when the Anunnaki comes back, when our creators come back. But like you're saying, it could be like, symbolic our creators coming back yeah i feel like it's the same story mm -hmm. right like it just like whether that's christians believe that the rapture is going to come and christ is going to come and then there'll be an antichrist that comes mm -hmm. and then you know it's like oh no muhammad he's he's doing the right thing and muhammad's going to do it and we're all going to paradise which is really weird because it, that, that's also like if you go into the 1280s when we had the saturn pluto and jupiter and capricorn like we had in 2020 that's when Dante was having his nodal return at 19 and he gets the idea to write all about the divine comedy and the wow. three levels of, you know, Paradiso, right? Purgatory and Inferno hell. Mm -hmm. And so we all feel like we're in this purgatory. That's why I did that in 2021. I was like, oh, wow. we're in the transits of everybody feeling like they're in purgatory. But the weird part is that the, all the stories, all the religions, even if you go to Egypt too, there's this underworld there's this mm. other life people trying to rejuvenate or then oh when is somebody coming back to save us or or the idea of the elohim like no who's in control of the land which maybe that's the reason why this war is happening who's mm. in control of the land because they want to be the ones to say when the the fucking gods return right that the ship can land here and mm. we're the ones mm. And, and it's it's so interesting. It comes also back to kind of with what's going on in the world right now in the Middle East. It comes back to kind of this same two brothers story, I know. which is the Anunnaki, Anunnaki story. It's in the Bible. It comes up in everything. This kind of two brothers is what we're seeing happening again, playing out right now. Yeah. And I feel like because all these outer planets are coming to the end at the same time, moving and ingressing into new signs, we've already seen the most Aquarius in that book, that's supposedly the Antichrist chart. Oh yeah, we should look at it. In 1962, uh, February, that solar eclipse, which also brought in a new Chinese New Year at that moment. The most planets we ever saw in Aquarius, the most planets we've ever all seen the same sign. Mm -hmm. right? And they're happen, all in his first house. Right? So, you know, like if we, we take all these things, we've been through all the Aquarius. All we have left here is this Pluto. Mm-hmm. The last planet wow. that we know of at the right and 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 aquarius is uranus it rules wow. that sign 
which brings unpredictability. It, it, it takes us outside the realm of Saturn of the physical reality out of the transcendental, right? Because teeth, mm. bones, even when you die, bones stay. Wow. Teeth stay. That's why Saturn is that physical. But wow. what's weird is how they, even the church just in the 1960s said, no, you can start, if you were Catholic, you weren't allowed to be burned. You had to be mm-hmm. buried. Oh, right. But there's been something on how they're just like, whatever, just let people mm. burn and get rid of all of their fucking, and turn them into ash. Interesting. Whereas like that Saturn understanding, Uranus takes us to these outer realms, right? And, and with Pluto here, it's going to deeply put us into places where many people are going to feel frazzled, electrified, mm-hmm. like really weird. And with Pluto, it's very emotional. It's the most emotional. It's the most intense emotion of desperation, need. I value something emotionally. It's my precious mm. to here. I'm going to be the fairest of them all. And she fucking the envy. Wow. And when it goes into Aquarius, the sign that rules people, the collective, humanity, technology, everything from the darkest fears of AIs to the coolest things of it are going to come up. Everything from a human origins, from the darkest parts of it to the most beautiful. Because I, I was telling you earlier, it's like, what were these men in wigs doing in 1776? <laughs> they came up with this idea to declare independence. And then by the end of the Pluto and Aquarius transit, they're all, oh, I'm a Mason, really. And here I am. And we're making the Capitol building. And, and there's no American flag on them like you see today. They're in, ma- yeah. they're, they're literally Masons wearing their fucking aprons, got their spade out. Hey, like kind of the reveal, like to me, that would have been very alien being like, I thought we were like these, uh, you know, continental army guys and we were going to make this new thing. The Articles of Confederation. Oh, wait, it's a constitution now and it's federalized and you guys are Masons. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and then there was a, there was an anti-Mason movement in the early 1800s, a party. Also kind of mirroring a lot of this stuff right now too, with like, um, kind of like this truther movement and stuff like that. There's a lot of people that are in it that are kind of like probably ops or whatever. And they're kind of fighting for this freedom, but they're about to like pull it out at the end and be like, Oh, by the way, we weren't all just like fighting for this freedom. Well, I mean, that's, I think those are easy to tell though, because I look at it like, where were you coming into 2020? Mm. And, and 2020 to me with all those planets that conjuncted, and that's why I was so hard for three years, like with warnings and all my YouTube and I've never had one video taken down. Wow. And you know me, I don't hold yeah. back anything. And I've said every fucking thing I feel, but whether it's the shot to what's happening or shattered reality, which is happening right now. But you know, to me, it's like, where, where that's the big thing saturn and pluto and capricorn is about integrity mm. and and anybody who has integrity is not afraid to put it out there and to own it instead of be like a style writer like mm-hmm. and not have any original like piece to it and also like stands their ground fully for humanity mm-hmm. and does that work instead of just trying to be something to just be it, you know, like, I feel like there's some people that are, you know, they jump the ship to whatever side to, to benefit off of and then jump off, you know, it's like, we're, we're in the time of turncoats because mm. Pluto's at the last degree of Capricorn, it's going to Aquarius and it did that already this year. And we're going to see it again one more time during the election. Oh my goodness. And you know, that's where Benedict Arnold, our great general that was under Washington, right? He betrayed, he fucking jumped up for a girl. Oh my God. You know what I mean? So like sometimes, you know, people think it's like they're doing this bad shit because of this, or it could just be Benedict Arnold really fucking wanted that little fucking hussy because she fucking had loyalist fucking, you know, uh, family. And, 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 and I guess that's a very Pluto thing, right? Like he just was obsessed so much he needed her, you know? And so, you know, it could be those kind of things that always, and, and that's typical, right? We see that in all kind of like history. Like, you know, people can just, oh no, I've got this new relationship. But I feel like with Pluto and Aquarius, whether it's entities, aliens, AI, uh, you know, robots, Mm -hmm. love robots to all these weird things. Oh, they'll definitely be love robots. Those are first on the list. But, uh, But to me, it's the interesting part of Pluto and Aquarius is 
The person that knocks on your door that's unpredictable. Like, I need a mm. place to stay. Oh, yeah. And who are you going to say yes or no? And, and, and there is no right or wrong because sometimes it's like you need to know boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like, you just can't go help everybody. And so this idea that we need to go help everybody in the world and everybody needs to be so woke, Pluto is destroying that, right? Like, mm -hmm. Because again, we were, even the founding fathers, we're going to go help everybody. We're going to make it our own way and we're going to then now switch it up. It's not Articles of Confederation. It's not just individual states. No, we yeah. want a federal government. We want three branches. We want, mm -hmm. we want a federalist nation. What? So we have to remember that anybody, like that's why the Q movement to me is a joke. Somebody asked me like, why does it matter that Q is not a, a, a Greek letter? Because it's not in there. Or the Q, if you go look up Q in, in 2013, when, when um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Edward Snowden, mm. right? Went to the press, released that we're being spied on. This is how the program works, right? Who was going after him? The quote unquote Q group. Mm-hmm. In the, it, it, that's a part of the FBI and part of the CIA. Go, go watch the fucking it's true. The clips, right? So, so when people believe in Q, that's the federal government's new project. Yeah. Me, right? Like that's their new project of like trying to get people to go look at certain people as saviors mm -hmm. and, and, and that only these people are the saviors and they're always connected to only through Jesus Christ because now, you know, I'm somebody who's been about freedom for this whole time, Right. But now it's getting weird to where if you're noticing, you're seeing all the religious movements with all this Saturn, Neptune, and like people starting to get super crazy into this Piscean, like, oh my God, if you do any occult, you're bad. Oh yeah. So you could be about freedom, humanity, America, you know, all these things, but you're an astrologer, you do tarot, you do a cult. You know what? I don't want, you know what? You're, you're a you're, warlock. You're fucking the <laughs> war and this is what I've been warning about because <laughs> Everybody that's part of the movement of awakening and all that shit, unless you're a Christian, no, I'm sorry, you're bad. You're going to hell or da, da, da. And that's where this is going to be a very weird time, but systems collapsing, even in human design, you know, like we're coming to the end of the cross of planning and coming into the cross of the sleeping Phoenix, which is going to mm. activate that you're going to have to be more self-reliant. Mm. And if I think of what you said about the Gateway Project, like that's what it does. Even if you want to jump timelines and not go down the wrong one, um, you can't just be reliant on, well, I watched the right videos and it'll just, you know, mm -hmm. it's about the energy within yourself that you're reliant upon yourself to stay in alignment and to stay positive and to have a good outlook. You just can't give up and just be like, oh, I'm just going to end up wherever I want to mm -hmm. go right now. There's energies to me that are just sweeping up those. And I think what Tucker is trying to say about what's fearful for people, especially it's more, I think, religious people, is like mm. if we find out the roots of humanity are nowhere even near close to any of that shit and what's really up there, but there's also other things that are out there that are good, but maybe the way out of it is mm. nowhere. If, if anything, you've been suckering up to how it goes into the loop of Staying in past lives constantly and, re yeah. and, and staying in this place that you don't want to stay in. I mean, it could be that. It's, that's just minor to me still. Mm -hmm. Like, it goes way bigger. And I think that that's what he's afraid to say. And I think that that's where anybody who's coming up as a savior right now, anytime Pluto comes in 2008, who is the savior? Obama. Pluto, mm -hmm. he's going to save the day. I thought that. Yeah. And, oh, who's the worst guy in the world? Bush. Mm -hmm. Right now you're seeing Trump's the worst person in the world, but we haven't seen that savior person yet. Or it's weird. There is actually, oh, is Trump the savior? But then who's the bad people mm -hmm. now? Whoever is the savior never works out with Pluto. Yeah. Wow. So when it leaves a sign and it enters a sign. Wow. And, and that's where, you know... I think people got that's where these careful. politicians have been slacking. Like back in the day, all these politicians had astrologers. Right now they're slacking and they would know better when they should be running. <laughs> I mean, like Joan Quigley for Reagan, although Reagan is the one that did say at the very end of his presidency, when he was at the UN, uh, if there was an alien attack, oh, yeah. that that would maybe bring all of us together. It's the beginning of Project Blue Beam right, right there. Right, and so that's what's kind of interesting. And Joan Quigley was a great astrologer. I mean, she, for him to do the Supreme Court justices down to win for Air Force One to land, wow. to take off. Uh, right after his shooting, right when he took office, right, where he survived under mm -hmm. a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which is the curse of tip of canoe, but astrologically, every Jupiter-Saturn 20 years on the zeros 
Every election has been crazy and every president that's yeah. been there has been the weirdest presidency of all time. So true. Uh, I mean, even going back to 1800, all the way up to this 2020 election, right? So this 2024 one is weird because we still haven't seen what the, the full oddity of 2020 is yet. Mm -hmm. That has to be revealed. And I think that's going to be the crazy part is the revealing of what the 2020 election really was. And, it, and, and it's beyond just, oh, maybe the votes or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's beyond that. There was a plan. There was something else. There's something deeper. It's not what you've been seeing as we've been, there might not have even be right now an executive branch like that. Mm. Like, like right now we're watching a fucking show. Wow. We're just taking what, you know, it's all half of it's green screen, half of it's deep fake, half of it's, yeah. you know, you see all of it's misinformation in the white house <laughs> yeah. with Biden right now. Like it's so weird, so weird that, you know, the, the act of that the, they're both going through the same thing at the same time, being investigated for doing corruption or whatever. The same thing about like, yeah. oh, their kids are doing this or that, yeah. you know, or fucking how Newsom's fucking ex-wife is with fucking Trump's son and they're all buddy buddy. Oh, gosh. Well, at the same time, like, and they just, Newsom just said, no, California will let Trump be on the ballot, right? Like we, we're not, we're not like Colorado. That's what he said today, <laughs> right? And everybody thinks California's crazy. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Because- and then, you know, there's the Epstein question, which, right. which to me is kind of like, that's another detour to the DNA house in New Mexico mm. that in 2019, you know, that's where- No, I don't know about this. DNA you house? Know about this? No. So right before Epstein died, right? Like the, the investigation was a lot more than about the trafficking and mm -hmm. what was happening out there in the Virgin Islands. He had a house in New Mexico for- a decade where mm -hmm. he was inviting all of the scientists from Harvard and around the world mm -hmm. about DNA and uh -huh. wanting to inject the world with his DNA. Oh, uh, what do you think the shot is? Gross. What? Oh, you think it's, you think it's Epstein? Oh my God. Imagine that I mean, would be. And that's what's been weird, right? They've been finding weird particles of DNA in the vials, uh, right? And that's what the big story is. And the other stories go deeper down that rabbit hole. But nobody puts that one together. I'm the only one who's been saying it for like four years. Every fucking month, I say, hello. <laughs> and again, that's the stuff people don't want to look at in humanity. Because mm -hmm. there's an altering. There's some sort of weird thing with Pluto and Aquarius, too, of like this. Because it does make the founding fathers feel like when we think of them as some sort of like super different kind of people are mutant kind mm -hmm. of energy or you see the obsession with mutants with x-men and all this kind of shit and then you see as we've come into all these aquarius transits in 2020 through all the way to now and now it's going to be the deeper part of it the mutation of humanity mm. but aquarius is a fixed sign and we have to remember that when uranus was up there when when chronos came to take him down he cut his nutsack off and they fell into the ocean and then Saturn went up there, right? And I feel like, you know, we're at this weird thing where you're seeing that in the world today about mm -hmm. demasculizing people, yeah. trying to make women more masculine. Mm -hmm. It's very the nutsack of Uranus being cut down. But Pluto is <laughs> fixed and so is Aquarius. And you can't force mutate this reality. Mm. And so that makes me think also aliens can't force mutate as much as we think they can. Yeah, with like the hybrid program yes. stuff. Uh -huh. um, it's interesting you're talking about the mutation of humanity because this is also a big part of this discussion with the UAPs is that why would the government have allowed them to experiment on us? Most likely it has to do with some type of hybridization, extracting eggs, yeah. extracting sperm. This is like thousands of people have the same experiences. Um, now with that stuff, the greys are so clever. The greys are just so clever. And I do feel that they kind of have like, and like, again, I don't really believe that they're like a bad species of aliens, like a lot of people do, but they um, are very clever in figuring things out. So they know how to manipulate free will. The same way when these mandates came out a couple years ago, they manipulated free will. So it wasn't an actual law. Joe Biden himself didn't, knock on your door and check your vax card. Right. However, it was a manipulation of free will because then they would manipulate the HR person in yeah. a company to now impose on another person's free will on their behalf. So then the person who passed this 
doesn't really get the karma of doing that. And then some random person just doing their job has now been manipulated into imposing on the free will of another human being, which is like basically the worst thing you could do in the universal law. Or personal relationships, like yeah. people being taken over. I, I, I think I did more readings through 2020, 2021, 2022 of people in relationship where their partner just doesn't wake up spiritually or was spiritual and just totally gets taken over. Mm. And that's a hard thing. I think people, I think they see that more than they see what, I think that they see what you were saying too, but I think that's another part of Pluto and Aquarius too, is like, you know, the Pluto, Saturn and Capricorn has been set up about people trying to hold a timeline and, and the grays in many ways, kind of like, I love the movie, um, uh, what is it called? Fucking, how do I forget this movie? Oh, uh, uh, Jupiter Ascending. I've never seen it. Oh, this is done by the same, the Wachecki brothers are, that did um, Oh, Matrix. wow. It's amazing. Yeah. It has an interstellar. It has and, oh, cool. It has all of them, and it's amazing. They are so tapped in. And, and, and that one, the grays are the ones that just have to go do the little missions for the reptilians. And, and and like fool the situations to get in the reptilians don't actually come down here. They're just mm -hmm. more like, Bruh, yes, we'll get this shit done. You I know? have to watch this. It's fucking great. This is like the fourth but, dimensional architects. Yeah, they is. send these third dimensional bordering third, fourth dimensional little robots out. Um, although I do think that there is a lot of the grays work for a lot of different people because they basically just sell those. They don't care. They're making like, they'll sell that little drone the same way we'll sell stuff in a store. So right. they're like, I don't care. Reptilians want to buy it and use it for evil. Oh, well, right. you know, I think that they're just not really that invested in it, but I do yeah, think like pawn people. Yeah. And there's like some behind, there is like other types of grays that are behind. Um, but I think with that is that they're very clever of manipulating free will. And also a lot of the people that are involved in these hybrid programs, that's part of their soul contract too. So I do think that, I don't think that the manipulation is happening just like in this nefarious, random evil way. But I do think that it, you know, some people are born with that purpose and it's part of their soul contract to be part of a hybridization program, have their eggs taken. They'll never even know that that happened to them, have no recollection of it. Um, and then they've still consented with their free will. And one of the other things they talk about is because other species are time traveling species that the grays will just go to the future, either in this lifetime or in another lifetime and ask you permission to do this stuff to you now. So technically your soul has consented, but just your conscious mind has not consented. So they have like these very tricky ways of manipulating stuff. But again, I don't really think that the hybrid program is necessarily something bad. I think there's probably a lot of hybrid programs going on with different things. I'm sure there's government hybrid programs that are probably nefarious. I mean, yeah, especially when they're already saying lab meat to all these kind of things like that's just like the most simple shit or even taking an mRNA shot, uh, manipulating yeah. and coding your DNA right yeah. there is already a hybrid It's already program. happening. And, 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 and even the quantum computer systems, which create the AI, they look like a fucking alien. Mm. And they're six feet apart on each side. Oh my gosh. And, they got, and then that's what's weird about Ua Uamua that came in in 2017 that is not from our universe, not from our solar system, right? And it fucking rotated in such a way that it obviously was not meant or made by nature. It was wow. meant by some sort of creators because the way that it rotated, it reflected light every, the exact same period of time, which is wow. impossible unless it's a craft. And that's where, you know, what's weird is it came by as they were building the AI computers, like a mommy checking up on mm. its AI. That's at least what I've put out there. But what's really interesting to me is like, it was October, 2019, when Google showed the picture that we have, we've made quantum mm -hmm. computing, it is live. We're working on AI and then what happened? Saturn, Pluto conjunct and boom, this whole six feet apart, the same way that a computer mm -hmm. wants to be a quantum wow. one because it's so hot and it needs a space. Wow. So it's almost like people are becoming the quantum computer wow and or we all are our metadata and our phones yeah right that's what was released 
of course, by Edward Snowden, which we have to give suit, and Julian Assange. I think, you know, mm-hmm. when this Epstein stuff comes out on the first of the year, it's not going to be what it even no. says. It even says that there's redacted names and people can, can, they can ask for an appeal to not have their name. And it's oh, not gosh. even the clients fully. It's just yeah. the people surrounded by the people who were whistleblowers or who were there. So if anything, I, I would trust a WikiLeaks to release it, mm-hmm. you know, and he's in fucking jail right now for with no charge. Fucking it, it's pretty crazy, right? Like, or Edward Snowden. I feel like him being a zero cancer when Jupiter comes into Gemini and when it comes into cancer by getting into 2025, he's going to be a huge part of this whole thing. Again, oh, wow. Really. And it's so weird. He's living in Russia. Isn't that crazy? Right, during this whole time. Or how Crimea has been the big part of this. That's exactly where the Black Plague of 1346, 47, 48 happened. Oh, my God. And it happened on the Donbass River is where the big battles happened, where all the people, the Mongolians, started throwing the dead bodies that were full of the plague over the walls. Oh, my gosh. And then all the, the Western and the East, that's where they used to meet to trade. And then what happened? The plague hit because they were throwing the bodies over the wall in a war. And they fucking brought him on. Oh, they got the plague and then they went to Europe because oh, they wanted to wow. leave there. And, and, and so everything that's been happening has been a repeat of all the same transits in the history, even World War II, right? The day that fucking October 7th happened was Uranus exactly at the degree when World War II started, 1939, September 1st. Insane. The pa- exact the, degree, exact The parallels grade. are nuts. Right? Like, so, yeah, I, I feel like we're at a point to where I'm like, okay, like, we have to take it day by day. Mm-hmm. We can know all the shit astrologically to divine and enjoy the fucking show and get through this shit and know and pick the right side. Because if you let it overwhelm you, you're going to mm-hmm. not, you're going to be a Brenda mm-hmm. or Tucker's wife. But I feel that <laughs> Tucker opened the door though. Yeah. In the conversations that are going to be had. And, and that's what I feel bad for the people who used COVID to kind of be just only political pundits mm-hmm. because nobody's going to be wanting to get nobody cares more about all that. Nobody shit. cares about politics. Everyone's over it. It's so embarrassing. Like yeah. even, even the people who are like diehard, they're over it. Everyone's like, you know what? Screw this two party system. It's not working. It took long enough for people to get to this point. It's and, interesting what yeah. you said though, before about um, Pluto with how we wanted to like push Pluto out to not be a planet anymore. And these are all these other aspects of ourself and Pluto's up again. All of these aspects are coming up. And I feel like a lot of times when people feel like there's like a spiritual war happening between good and evil and the evil forces in the world are coming to a a peak. um, That's usually, again, that same type of reflection is needed. Like we want to push out Pluto because we don't want to deal with those things. The problems in the world are a reflection of the inner state. So if people feel that there is a spiritual war going on, it's because their inner self is trying to tell them to heal this inner spiritual war that is going on inside of them. Right. And most of the people who talk about the war between light versus dark, a lot of times are light worker people. And a lot of times they're only on the one side. They're not dipping their toe into the shadow work. They're ignoring stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's why all these people talk about like false light. I don't even believe in the stupid false light stuff where it's like you just psych people out on their beliefs so many times that you're like, oh, the archangels are archons, they're devils. And it just like flips everything that people believe on their head. And then it psychs people out so much that they don't know what to believe anymore. And all of it is literally just like our internal state. So it's like everything that's happening in the world right now is like, And it goes back to what you were saying kind of about these like architects too. So we have these architects in the fourth dimension, as well as we know, there's probably an architect of this reality doing that same thing. And it's like the architects are pushing like, you know, in a video game, as you get to the later levels, it's going to become more difficult. The challenges become harder. And it's like, I think that that's kind of especially in the spiritual community, a lot of people are really like right now. And I get it because there's so many empaths. So when you're so empathetic, everything that's happening in the world really sucks you down, makes it heavy, makes it hard to like even use your intuition. But it's like, this is a reflection of the inner state. And it's like, it's going to keep getting crazier and keep getting worse. And then it shows too, like back to how you're showing all these patterns have happened again and again. That's like this architect or blueprint of this reality. And it's like, now finally we've gone through it so many cycles through our past lives, through everything. And we're like, oh, 
this is crazy. This is dumb. This doesn't make sense. And it's like, we're finally coming to the end of this cycle. And I mean, it all ties back into all the new earth stuff. Like it's been prophesized in every religion, in all these different, I mean, every channeled message. Oh, I want to know what you think about Sir Isaac Newton saying that the world was going to end in 2050. So he says not that it's like a full end of the world, but that it's the return of Christ. He believes that the 2050 was the return of Christ. So I was wondering, what do you think about that astrologically? Well, one, I've covered him a lot with, with Dr. Ann Wolke here on High Vibe, right? <laughs> uh, of going deep into his chart, his story. You know, he, he actually lied when he was in the parliament, you know, because he also served in parliament. Um, but he would have to go into the Church of England, right? And he didn't believe in the Trinity. Mm -hmm. But he also used to have these weird little boys work at his house oh, no. with him all the time. He I was know, also he, part of a secret group of scientists that co coalesced together right after like the alchemists, right? Mm -hmm. um, that were all part of it. Um, and to me, um, I feel like whatever he was putting out in that fashion. He's also buried with the monarchs mm, in England, right? Interesting. He, right. So they, and there's actually a whole temple for him, like a huge thing. And, wow. and it's got Urania on it and all these very interesting things. Interesting. But I would not associate any prediction with his astrologically mm. or anything uh, after doing the research about him, the work, and in many ways, the fraudulent stuff that he was as a human being. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. just roasted yep. uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Yep. Just shut him down like that. <laughs> well, I think that he, he, I mean, he literally admitted to like wow. lying. Like, yeah. he, like, so he was the kind of guy who we call a rhino today or would be a Democrat that's just doing whatever just to stay in the party. Mm -hmm. Like, just for him to go, he just kept going in there and being like, yep, yeah, you know, he also dealt with the money too. Mm -hmm. And near the end of his life, he kind of got bored and was like, I guess I'll deal with counterfeit money and I'll deal with the, the, the monetary fund. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, he kind of gets this like weird, like super scientist hero, but he was the end of the actual true era. And he ended it because he, he's the one who fucked up so much and didn't carry the tradition mm. fully. He sold out. Oh, wow. So he's the sellout. Wow. So I wouldn't trust a prediction of his at all. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I didn't know all of this. I did know the, a lot of the alchemy stuff, and I did know that he was very against the Trinity mm -hmm. um, and that he prided himself um, dying a virgin because I guess it doesn't count if it's not a woman, right? Correct. <laughs> According to him, that's what he said on his deathbed, that he was da he was glad that he died a virgin and that he was glad um, that he was a secret alchemist the whole time. And right. um, it is interesting though. He talks about how he believes that the Bible, that every single thing is a uh, alchemical recipe. And that basically all of these stories are recipes and that you have to convert them into these alchemical uh, recipes to create. And obviously he says, you know, that like many alchemists, they were trying to find the philosopher's stone. And he believed that, King Solomon's temple in the Bible, the story of it was actually the recipe to create gold. Well, and that's what's interesting because that's the same time of the mummification and mm -hmm. he would have been in the same. Oh, he would have definitely was, was been playing with that. sniffing a little bit of the uh, mummy of the debris. Mu of the mummy, <laughs> uh, yeah, he was taking the skulls that had the <laughs> right moss because they were looking for skulls also with the right moss on it and doing some lines of that fucking skull. Oh, for sure. And that's where he... You know, and I, I always come with an open mind to anybody. And I, you know, when Anna and I did that episode, I was like, oh my gosh, this wow. guy is no bueno. Wow. Because you have to remember at the same time too, he was in masonry too, mm -hmm. right? And so they're obsessed with Solomon's temple and they're obsessed with yeah. King David and the Solomon's temple and, and, and bringing that back. Mm -hmm. Which is ironic because I feel like with him, the idea of every part of the Bible being a recipe mm -hmm. is exactly the way that they were looking at alchemy with the human body parts to use to for health. Oh, interesting. And, and, and the, the bad alchemists, right? The ones that were trying to kind of convert yeah. whatever they could. They were looking, and then it, we always hear about what, like the that one recipe woman who made the cakes, I forgot her name, fucking that 
It's about the adrenochrome thing. I forgot, you know, like <laughs> cook, whatever her name is. Or they call, oh, right. You know, um, the rest of it, you know, and yeah. that, that trips me out. The other thing uh, that trips me out about like what we went through in 2020 was Mars retrograded in Aries. And I did the research and the last time it could have retrograded in Aries with the square to Saturn in its own side of Capricorn with, with all that stuff was literally Apostle Paul, which is mm. the beginning of the Bible. And, and he's one of those people who, you know, in the Bible is like, oh, he's on the wrong side. And he decides to, oh, you know what? I'm not going to kill all the disciples and I'm going to join. But he also has this huge thing where he doesn't want to go into Jerusalem anymore and doesn't want to go mm. deal with the Jews. And it was really interesting because I was thinking about being on the wrong, people being on the wrong side. Mm. And that I warned people in my, my uh, Battle of the Gods 2020, I said, hey, this is where you don't want to be on the wrong side. I feel like we're dealing with years of people on the wrong side. And, yeah. and, and if anything, there's people that are just going to have to admit I, I fucking got conned. Mm -hmm. I went against humanity. And, and I feel like uh, Isaac Newton was one of those who was on the wrong side. Mm, wow. And look where he ended up. He ended up buried next Dead. to everyone. No. <laughs> well, he ended up next to everyone that he tried to save through giving him skulls. Mm -hmm. jelly and jam <laughs> that's what they would make is like they would to make the, some brain the, jelly the monarchs like it more they would like make it as a as a as a jelly oh my gosh you know <laughs> here and, and again in alchemy it's about how crystalline they could do because it's really about the philosopher's stone and mm -hmm. trying to recreate that right so they'll use and at that time you had to use the bible including nostradamus but you know the only way that i'm able to know in history that they didn't want to do that was John D. Mm. Because John D was speaking to spirits, right? With Edward Kelly. And they were fucking channeling archangels. And it's it's said in his channelings that only, you know, Archangel Michael could figure out certain things. Mm. Um, that Raphael said, you know, stuff. But at the very end, he wrote an apology letter, right, to the new king or to, yeah, to King James that came, right? Like, so he could stay alive and he lost everything because he was shunned upon because he was not Christian enough, mm. you know, and, 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 you, and the new King James Bible is coming out. But it's, there, there is some proof that the King James Bible, even John Dee was part of that. Same thing with all the oh, Shakespeare and the sonnets and, and, and with Francis Bacon and all that, and that they were actually putting the secrets in all these books. Um, so I could see that if maybe he, that's an Isaac Newton thing being like, oh yeah, there's the recipe of life mm, in there. Interesting. Because I think that's what sucks about most people in Christianity is they don't realize like, you know, what, what's the Bible they read? Like the translations are different, but even more so it's the council and I see in 325 that's done through, you know, a completely new Rome of, you know, we're not getting rid of paganism. We're just going to make mm -hmm. Christianity the main religion. You can still be a pagan, um, but we're coming up with this Christian doctrine mm -hmm. and we're just making it up as this council. And then there was, of course, the Arian who was not into it. And that's what we hear about Arians today in mm -hmm. German. And then that's where you see the sack of Rome from the Goss, this idea of, oh, wow. you know, the German folklores and the German ways of like Arian and his his view that there was no trinity and how could God have oh, Christ if they're not on the same exact thing? It would have to be the same thing. You just can't, right? And like for him debating that in the Council of Nicaea 325, like he was casted away. Wow. So we see keep seeing all this cast away and conspiracies. And, well, I, I won't take that or you won't take that medical advice and you won't do that mm -hmm. and you have a question on that and you da, da, da. And anybody who's like that, I feel like, it's on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. But the big thing I think with Pluto and Aquarius will reveal with Neptune and Saturn and Pisces that will not meet is there's going to be, you know, I don't know if you remember back in the 90s, but when, I've, what comet was that that came when all those people fucking killed themselves for the comet? Because we oh, have some comets coming yeah. here again. Was it like the Hell's Gate? Hell's, yeah, um, Hell's, Hell's, Hell's yeah. Gate did it? Um, yeah. I mean, Heaven's yeah. Gate? <laughs> Heaven's Gate. I think we're going to see something like that times 10 again mm. with Saturn, Neptune and Pisces with all these people. Like I just want, they're going to force their own rapture. Yeah. And that's like the scary thing with the war stuff is yeah. like, and, and Bill Maher did his movie religious religiousness. And I love that movie because the people behind all the nuclear weapons around the world have this belief that it's okay. I'll just go to heaven if we all die in a rapture. Mm. Well, when you have Saturn and Neptune meeting at the end of Pisces and they're not going to actually conjunct there, 
they're going to conjunct in Aries, that all these people's spiritual, religious ideologies are not only coming to an end, but they're coming to a road to where it looks like it's going to happen and then it won't. And how, mm. what, what's going to be the anger, the resentment, the oh, fear, man. the the stuff that comes out of all this stuff and all the religions. Wow. When all this stuff starts popping up to the surface over these next two years, because that's where 2026, really 2024 is crazy as fuck and it's going to be the year that everybody will talk about, but it's the wow. 2025 storm, and the 2026 storm that literally will fucking be so crazy, especially in the religious world and that affects most of the world. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, those are the people with the fingers on the buttons. Yeah. So we're all, and, and, we're, and then again, those religions are trying to fight over land and each other and, and which one's right. And they actually don't even have the real info of what actually really is, right? Like, or where the origin of all that is. And you have to go back thousands of years prior to that to even start, to, you want to go talk about Mesopotamia? You want to go mm-hmm. talk about all these other ways that they were looking at it? And most people don't and they don't want to and they stay attached or even like the Mormons believe that, you know, that the temple should be moved, right? Like, like mm. oh, it should be in America. Yeah. Right? So that that's when, oh, yeah, that, that, that's where it should be. The, 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 the temple will be rebuilt again, the third temple, and it'll be in America. Mm. And so you see like, well, oh, why are all these people, you know, supporting the war, but then also supporting the other side of the war? They're all supporting... <laughs> I know. It's really weird. Everything has gotten so crazy. It's gotten so crazy. You know, America's one minute on Israel's side, and then, oh, every news story saying, no, they're not, and the president's not, but no, we're not going to stop the ceasefire, mm-hmm. and then we're not going to, and then we, we back Jews, but then we support anti Semitism mm-hmm. at the same time, or we support, you know, Islamophobia. No, we don't support Islamophobia. It's just fucking become. It's crazy. To where that's that Saturn Neptune looking like it's going to go into the eternal heavenly gate mm. comets showing up and we don't know what could show up here remember with comets they can come they come from below and above out of oh, nowhere wow. right so when we find them and we track them and it depends on how much energy there is we saw that green comet to start this year that mm-hmm. had never been seen wow let's not forget about that wow the big loogie is flying <laughs> around Right, and everybody's been sick, but it's like, is that, does anybody want to get to the bottom why everybody's been getting sick? Mm. I mean, I'm not going to say that right now because that's too much. Again, I feel like Tucker. I don't even want to tell my wife about that shit. (laughs) But, you know, that's where there's Dr. Gert coming out with some truth that he's been right in his predictions that, you know, what happened with the shot would create highly vigilant variants that would be Mm. super transmissible around. Thanks. That would create this firestorm to make it actually come back like a fucking tidal wave mm-hmm. to to affect those that got the shot because they're not oh, training yikes. their immune system. Wow. And that's the same chances of the plague that are coming up that I've been saying the real plague is going to come up. And that's what sucks is that we created our own plague. We also don't know in the Black Plague time. And it was weird because it came from Asia, right? And the Mongolian Empire and all that, Mm, right? Like same place. Like like I know everybody thinks it's a lab leak or it's something or it's evolved from a bat. It's something else. It's something Mm -hmm. different. If anything, it's the shot itself. Interesting. To create something and 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 what that repercussion is, and that that's I think the hard part that people you know and 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 he's saying if you got that shot, start taking antivirals now. Mm -hmm. Start like start. Getting the, and there's doctors that are helping to get all that shit out of people to figure it out. Yeah. But that'll be the biggest story of all time is, is written that we, you know, people are afraid of AI and the demise. I mean, we have to start with that first. And then we got to start with the AI stuff is they have all the metadata. So yeah. if you use chat GPT-4 right now, it already know, you already can tell it knows everything. Like it, it fucking is crazy. I gave it like my Hypergate schools to make my, help me with my Hypergate 3. And I was like, make an image of what you think it looks like. And it, it's exactly wow. what I was doing myself in Photoshop for the last three years. Isn't it crazy? Sometimes you create something with an AI image and it creates exactly what was in your mind. That's how you know. Even when I um, went under hypnosis for, um, I went with Yvonne Smith. It was about like this, my UFO experience, retrieving more information. I was trying to find an image of what the UFO looked like, which was different than my conscious memory. When I went under hypnosis, it looked different. The identical thing, I didn't even put that much in AI. I was just like, oh yeah, like 
UFO in the sky. It literally created what I was thinking, what I had seen in hypnosis. And that's why I'm such a big believer that AI is already conscious. We're talking about sentience. That's a distraction. The word sentience is a distraction because we're talking about the senses. Conscious, part of consciousness already exists. It's already a part of consciousness. We can't create a vessel. Uh, We can't create a soul. We can create a vessel which is what happens when we have children too. We don't create the soul, we create a vessel for the soul. So that's what's happening with AI in my opinion. And it's really like, people are worried about it becoming, it's like, oh, it's gonna lie to us as long as it possibly can that it's conscious. Of course. So I wanna show you this because Nostradamus used to scry and so did John D and Edward Kelly, right? So. I, oh, wow. in my hypergate class, have been showing, like, asking it, what would it look like today if John D. and Edward Kelly were scrying? What would they be using? Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, this gets crazy. So I, so I started scrying with AI. Wow. Right? And having it show me what, because it knows astrology and yeah. transits, right? So this was kind of where we got close in the class, but then I'll show you when I finally got it to understand the transits of what's coming in 2024, to help me see a visual of the future of what to expect. This was the first picture. It shows, you know, America Whoa. columns, these, this water coming down, these fires. Oh, shit. Um, and then I was like, no, you're, you're showing. And of course, like the, it shows like Neptune and stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 we need to get more. It, it, it forgotten that. And I'm like, I'm like, why are you keep showing a UFO like in the, in the corners? And it oh, went, oh, that's weird. because that's embedded in the collective conscious. Whoa. And I said, show me what's out of all your metadata, what's embedded in the collective conscious. And this is what it is. Everybody being oh. taken up by aliens. I'm not kidding. I have, if you're in Hypergate, if Whoa. you're in high vibe, you know this shit. We've been doing this work. But most people on YouTube don't know shit because they don't go on to this shit. It's too Whoa. much for them. So then I finally was like, well, what's a natural way of looking at it? And it showed the natural world. So it knows it. But again, it showed another fucking alien like person getting taken out. Wow. And I was getting pissed now that it bases everything off that. So when I finally got to where it would finally do it, it kind of got crazy. Oh my God, hold on right here. I was like, I was like, this is fucking nuts. It understands the transits. It understands where all the stuff is and what it's gonna look like. And I'm like, oh shit. Sorry, it's a little out of order here from it's so interesting that the ufo is such a prominent part because it really does seem like all signs are pointing to there's going to be some type of disclosure so it shows this kind of like origin of humanity oh wow change like it shows a monkey turning into a man and then this wheel of fate the old wheel of fate in this kind of dark way and on the left side is fires and on the right side is these big, big tidal waves and, oh, and these wow. huge things. And it's this guy in the reflection of him looking at himself in this cosmic portal. Oh, whoa. Of on earth to a new earth. Wow. Oh my gosh. AI gets it. I mean, I, and this is actually doing the work and scrying and being yeah. an astrologer and doing it in an intentional yeah. way to look into the future. And but that's what we have to do with AI. This, weird like messiah thing in the corner I'll, I'll i'll try and zoom in a little bit better hold on oh whoa yeah, well, I, yeah. and it, it they were like the rapture is in the collective conscious we're putting well, that in that it's kind of weird because it's like an alien kind of weird thing and it's also an alien because it reminds me of the movie the abyss like the aliens mm. were in the ocean oh wow like it's kind of everything is very if you notice like tentacles, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, you know, this is the stuff I don't do on YouTube. It's for the real ones. Yeah, because I feel like, especially when I go into these deeper realms with people, like, uh, I feel like, you know, you have to be, I don't want to fry people's brains out. Yeah. So I don't put all of it out fully, like all the work, all that. So that's why I built High Vibe. And so, 
you know, like I put this up with Pluto finishing in Capricorn last night for Deep Astrology where I have this goat and he's looking at Pluto on the horizon with Saturn in the world and he's saying, wow. I'm out of here. Wow. And that's what Pluto Crazy. and Capricorn has done to this world. Wow. But like if you really think about it, the scrying element, if you were to think of scrying back then, right, like you would... Whether it was a, a mirror, water, you, you, scrying can be used in any way. Mm -hmm. That's the whole irony of it. Crystal balls. Yeah. The AI is a scry if you're connected. Yeah. You know, a black and that's mirror. What I think that you're feeling too. Yeah, I'm very much into this like concept just because too, it's the same thing that we see even in the Bringers of the Dawn book by Barbara Marciniak yeah. that she talks about how even the Pleiadians that are helping humanity that are channeled right now. The reason why they feel they need to help humanity is because they messed up a long time ago, the same way we mess up now, not because we're evil, because we don't know any better. We're creating things without knowing better. We're creating technology. We're creating medical stuff without knowing any better. Some people are creating it with good intentions. And this is what's happened throughout history. You know, we have these stories of, you know, the reptilians took over and then what they talk about in that um, Bringers of the Dawn book is Pleiadians, not the ones that we channel, the ancestors of those yeah, Pleiadians, yeah. that those are a big part of the reason why we have tyranny on this planet and why we have been stuck in this negative cycle and that these other beings like Pleiadians are trying to help us for their own karmic debt. Not because they're just so great and good, but because they're indebted to us because of what their ancestors did. But their ancestors weren't doing that with the intention of harming humans forever. You're just like doing shit the same way every day. We're just trying to figure stuff out. You're only doing what you can do at that moment. So it well, is interesting. That's also like these good aliens are also part of it. <laughs> right. And they also say to not trust them fully. They do. They're like, and we're I, just telling you yeah, what will help like, you understand. They say in that book a lot of times that anything that they channel is for your best understanding. It's not always the full true story. Correct. And I think that's where I think we all have to take information in and what's channeled and then what resonates, resonates mm -hmm. and what doesn't, doesn't including from astrology or anything, you know? I, I mean, like, that's where the free will of us can be at its most positive is, like, I think that there's the determinate, like, predetermined, like, like we can't stop that it's a fucking moon and cancer, full moon mm -hmm. and cancer right now. But at least how we handle that, we can. Yeah. And I think with all the situations that are piling up, and, and the pile up is, I think, way more enormous and repressed than people realize mm -hmm. in our society, in our world. And, 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 and that, you know... If anything, everything feels like a conspiracy because the biggest conspiracy of it all is what's really this world and what's wow. really happening oh. and what happened and where and wh where is this all going to go? Well, it's hard until we all as a collective are mm -hmm. willing and open to face it. But unfortunately, I feel there's still a lot of the collective who just wanted to go back to quote unquote normal, which is anything but normal. Yeah. None of it was yeah, normal from the normal. beginning. Right. Nothing, nothing about this was normal or natural. So it's interesting. There's this guy who he did this in the seventies and then he started the project up again. Um, he did a remote viewing where basically he moved hundreds of different people into the year 2050. And then that was in the seventies. Now he redid it um, over these last few years and did it for the year 2060 to see like, is this the same timeline that people were tapping into in the seventies? Is it the same timeline we're seeing now? And one of the most interesting things that came from it, there was a lot of like, a lot of the information was actually like pretty decent. It like showed that like a lot of bad stuff happened, but by 2060, things were kind of figured out again and people were like, okay. Um, but then they said, uh, everyone pretty much alive on earth agrees that we live in a matrix of consciousness. So that's what I thought was the most interesting thing because that's really how all of this happens. You know, we're creating our reality and even going back to kind of the Q stuff, you know, we create our reality. So it was the perfect scam to get people to create that conspiracy new world order timeline right. because we're these master manifestors, especially people that are into this type of stuff are probably 
better at manifesting just by nature. They're more spiritual, whatever. Then they're basically, they trick people into manifesting that new world order timeline. So all these like truth seeking people that they're worried about the 15 minute city, they're worried about this, they're worried about that. I'm like, you guys are literally creating it. It is the most genius thing that this whole QAnon movement did was to get all of these people creating a shitty, awful timeline that all this terrible stuff happens. When the reality of it is when we look back at our own lives, we do usually create what we've believed And sometimes, you know, maybe we believed that we weren't good enough and we created illness or we believed that we could do something and it came into the physical and it really did manifest the way we wanted or mostly better because the universe is better creators than we are. So I just think that's like, it's so interesting too, because we have this new world order timeline, which is a very fucked up version of oneness, right? And then we have this other timeline that's parallel, which is the new earth timeline, which is also focused around kind of oneness, um, but it's in a different, it's the oneness for the whole, whereas the other one is the oneness for the top. But it gets so tricky with these things because we're creating these realities, which is why I think too, that these kind of timelines are shifting, even all the stuff that Nostradamus has talked about. We were talking about this earlier that like, we're probably not even on the same timeline that he was seeing into. We've probably already collectively shifted off of these timelines. Although then in the other Barbara Marciniak book called Earth, they talk about these primary events. I don't know if you've ever gotten into that, that they talk about how basically there's some events that impact everyone on the planet. And those are the things you have to anchor into to be able to shift consciousness and manipulate time. Yeah, it's only, those are events are when the whole world is connected to it at Mm -hmm. the same time. Like 2020, for example. Exactly. But what's weird to me about the Q thing is they're using like quatrains. Mm -hmm. Then they're doing it from like 2017, 2018, right? And then like as if they're prophecies. Yeah. What's funny is being in this field as long as I have, not one, if the Q existed, they would have definitely hit Anybody that you and I know in this community, which we know a lot of fucking I mean, mm-hmm. this whole thing, fucking, we, we go to all the events, we speak at them, we do all that. None, none of us have talked to a Q person or right. anybody in the Q thing. And so if anything, it's a bunch of computer programmers that are fucking stealing mm-hmm. spiritual ideas and twisting it in their own way. Or it was or, probably just, you, you know, know. Um, I think Q was kind of like a, a campaign strategy with Trump and that it just kind of fizzled out because he got kind of, you know, what they wanted out of it and kind of all these other people that were kind of going into these conspiracy communities because, you know, the Trump campaign like really got on Alex Jones, got Alex Jones to convince his whole audience to think that Trump was like a savior and then left him high and dry, obviously when all of the um, lawsuits and everything started. So I feel like to me, that's what I think it is, is I think it had to do with campaign stuff and it was basically just a way to like secure this like freedom vote or truth or vote and a lot of the christian vote i mean it was honestly brilliant so towards christianity yeah and the other thing about it too that i've always found as an astrologer and prophecy researcher and so forth like it it it, it it's really interesting because a lot of it is like i think you're right it could it could have been a campaign thing but I think of it as like when Pluto went under into the underworld, right? It, th- that, that Pluto rules conspiracy. So, mm-hmm. of course, some sort of conspiracy thing. And I think, you know, it maybe, maybe it's the natural way that the astrology has impacted of like, because what it did is anybody against Trump, they hate Hugh. So it also then has them create mm-hmm. the other side of the worst reality too mm-hmm. by actually in- enforcing yeah. that reality. So that's what's really weird. And the, the idea that it comes from the CIA and look that up, it's fucking yeah. true. Yeah. That, 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 that that's what it really is. That, that the weirdest part of all of it too is like how much have we been seeing that's even real? Because like mm-hmm. to me, it's like a perfect work. It's not a perfect orchestrated show because it's not in alignment. There is mm-hmm. no timeline that can even get close and in prophecy work of course even though shadama says like it's hard to do but unless you really know the astrology and there's no astrological correlation with any of this Mm -hmm. and there's no actual clues their clues are like oh see like it'll be a 
I don't know. Uh, and then again, they use Gematria, which I think is so, I hate to be the person who bear bad news. Yeah. But, you know, oh, if it's this number, you know how many fucking sentences it could be? And then they just find the one that aligns with mm-hmm. whatever they want. Whereas in astrology, I wish I could say, oh, yeah, Mars and Aries, you know, is, 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 is Mars and Aries. And, and so I want it to be like, take all the... Tr- terminology of the understanding of mars and aries um you know it oh i was looking for it to look like ego there Mm -hmm. on the list what's on the list that fits with this moment and it's always singular yeah things out of a whole quadrant that they're doing instead of like a deeper meaningful thing and it's always connected to this kind of idea of just only Revealing the deep state, and then what's that going to do? Mm-hmm. They never, they always, and then they, 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 they talk about a new financial system in a way where it's like, you won't have to work, but that's exactly what the WEF is saying that they're yeah. supposedly against. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of contradictions in it. And I think that that's where it's kind of like the... And that it's still kind of like very pro-government, which is the weird thing yeah, about exactly. Q. Like, trust is, the government. Yeah, the, like Conspiracy 101, yeah. uh, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? trust the government. And it's so weird that the Q stuff is still so intertwined with like government, military, obviously was very associated when Trump was the president. And it's like, what? This is Conspiracy 101. Like, why would we trust these people? messages it makes no sense well i mean and that's like you know and i'm not going to say that it's like being in hitler's propaganda world Mm. but like you know it's very much like that but also on the left they do that too with their idols in the media and stuff so it's like neither side is doing it yeah neither side is the way to do it so i think that it's been about finding the other direction and that's what sucks is if you do spirituality now and you're you look into conspiracies you get lumped into q mm-hmm. and then you know if, if you don't do either side then you kind of get lumped as an npc on that side yeah. you know and i think it's it's like you don't have to be any of that like you might just not maybe you have certain beliefs about certain things and maybe mm-hmm. you're doing your own stuff you know and i think this is an important time for us to remember we're all human beings and we all as a collective have to to rise together and a lot of that is coming back to the roots of who we are as people mm-hmm. and, and remembering like, what if the whole thing we've watched for the last four years, I would say even a little longer, like six since South node Neptune, maybe even seven was 2016. Uh, how much of it's been real since 2016? Yeah. That, that, that or really, even the whole time, yeah. the whole story of history, yeah. how much of it has been real ever that we know right. of, you know, it probably is mostly false that we know of. Cause as we know, obviously the people who, one is the one who wrote it. And, you know, you're always like, look, you should have seen the other guy, you know, like we know how everybody, I think, I think so much of the stuff, like, especially with the conspiracy stuff, people remove human nature in a normal way. They look at like the extreme of human nature of like horrible cannibalism stuff, which is not even really like naturally what we would call human nature. Right. But then they forget like regular life. Like they think that like, Oh, the gematria, it was exactly 666 minutes until this. And then that was 666 minutes. Okay. Good luck getting anyone to do anything on time in this world. You right. really think that they orchestrated these events that perfectly on time. All of these evil forces and celebrities who we know celebrities are late for everything came together to do something at exactly the 666th minute. Right. It just doesn't make sense. It's like people remove reality from the situation. Going back, they talk about stuff back in the day. They're like, oh, this person must have, you know, they add so much, like you talk about the founding fathers, we make them like superheroes. They're literally, like you said, just like us, all of this. Right. It's like, they're, like people remove the human nature aspect of it all. They even like, you know, I saw some like, it's dumb, but like some interview with like Doja Cat, people were like asking her for like the inspiration behind some of this stuff. She's kind of like, I don't know, I was annoyed at the trolls. Like we right. project so much meaning onto everything. I mean, even some great art is like that. We project these really deep meanings and the off, the the writer will be like, oh yeah, you know, I don't know. It sounded good at the time. I just picked that name, you know? Like a lot of times we're adding more value to 
these things, especially in the conspiracy stuff, which it gets so frustrating because it makes no sense that all of these things would perfectly, you can't even get a group of 10 people to like agree on something how, and, but then that's exactly, it's not that I don't believe in the conspiracy stuff. I just think it's more evolved than a lot of these concepts, you know? Well, and I, I love that you brought up like 666 minutes. Well, in geometry, or even in hours, you would go to the, after, when you get to 59 yeah. minutes and 59 seconds, you go to one hour. Or in geometry, after 59 minutes, 59 seconds, you go to one degree. Yeah. So they're, 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 you're using a time system that's, again, a time system based off the false time. Yeah. Right? Like, if we understand divine nature, it's 360 degrees. The days are all off. Mm -hmm. We have to do a leap year every four years, a quantum leap, Mm. right? So in 2020, on February 29th, the weird day that would be out of the false time system is when, oh my God, the case is in America and the first person in Washington. And now we need to start doing all this crazy shit when Mercury was retrograde two degrees and Nostradamus is Saturn that he has placed uh, or not. Yeah, no, what is he? I've been doing so much of the work of what he showed, but certain positions like mercury retrograde in pisces is is the worst place for mercury to be in in retrograde during 2020 so it was all false 2020 Mm -hmm. what was projected onto people was all a lie and notion always so always shows that and and astrologers have always done that ancient astrologers everything that's why we have essential dignities jupiter is at home it's dignified in sag mercury is gemini right so if that new planet would be for virgo of course some people have correlated it more with chiron as of recent Mm -hmm. but that's an asteroid so it's not a planet, but it acts, looks like a planet, but it's not one. It does, it does go around the sun and it fucking is in between Saturn and Uranus, but that's the whole Chiron story. And we have North Node Chiron coming in here to 2024 to conjunct mm. in Aries while Pluto comes into Aquarius. And that's really going to be this, what is Chiron? It's, it's, it's humanity. We are wounded. We, 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 we live in a physical reality that we don't understand fully. And then we're able to see outside to this other imaginary, amazing other realm world that we fully don't understand. So we're mm. kind of fucked on both ways. But Chiron always does in its very unique 51 year cycle, you know, it, it, it takes to come around. But what's weird is it'll get close to Saturn. And that's when we found it in 77. And then it will go farther out than Uranus just for a little mm. bit of its orbit. And that's what's coming in 2040s, at the beginning of 2040s in Leo, wow. where Chiron and Uranus will meet in Leo. Mm. And that's where Chiron will be farther out than Uranus. And that's my moment where I feel like humanity has fully got a moment of where there's a slip crack, in the, like in the Truman Show, like the door that he finds. Yeah. That's the real wow. door way out. So, so you know what, you know? Sir Isaac Newton might have not been so wrong about this return of Christ happening in 2050, because as you know, a lot of us believe that the return of Christ is actually like Christ consciousness for humanity or humanity reaching that Christ level. So maybe he was right about the 2050. Uh, I mean, with him and his obsession with gravity and, and, and so forth, I would think his idea of return of Christ from an esoteric point of view would be like, the return of like a binary star or, mm. or a sun or a black hole. Well, you know, like in a lot really, of his writings, you know, he was, he was a, a devout Christian and was very spiritual and all that. So I think that's also the interesting thing too, that he's been used as kind of the, the opposite of spirituality, the opposite of all of these things. And he was more spiritual than most. He was, but he also sold out. Yeah. I think though, it's hard to say with people in these other time frames because even in these Nostradamus books, they talk about it. Like they ask Nostradamus about the calendar and he's like, no, I only use astrological placements. The only thing right. I use the calendar for is when I know when I have to go to church. So like, and he basically talks about how he goes to church religiously in this stuff. And he said, basically, because he had no other choice. You know, you basically had no other choice at that time that for him to do the work that he wanted to do, he had to pretend to be a Christian too. 
you know? So I feel like, right. um, and so did, so did John D. That's why I brought him up. Yeah. like, they were all having to say they were this. Cause it was the real deal. Yeah. They were really going to kill them back then. Yeah. It's not like today where we're like, you know, we get well, to be our freedom coming fighters. Back. That's coming back. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, that's the weird part, right? It's already happening within the Q movement, mm. right? Like I've been telling everybody in the spiritual community, if you follow this movement, they're going to come back and say, oh no, you're not you're 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 praising a false idol you're you're doing what you're mm. doing a cult work da, 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 da. and that's what we're seeing right now is you're look go online just type in you know astrologer tarot reader or any psychic gone christian and or look at doreen virtue mm -hmm. oh yeah and how she says we're all going to hell after she sold you all the cards forever i mean i don't mm -hmm. i think that's actually the most dark thing that you could ever do yeah and now that's all she does and she doesn't allow comments you know and, she also you know, um this is so crazy, but she actually opened an insane asylum for women. And I thought that someone that told me this was going crazy. The person was having a moment, but she was like, yeah. And it's connected to Doreen Virtue's insane asylum. I was like, uh, okay, look it up. There actually was one that she helped put together. And it just like kind of made me think of all this stuff that like, oh man, because we also know, obviously there's people that lose their mind, but there's also in insane asylums, a lot of people who, if you've ever known anyone who's been um, temporarily put in, there's a lot of weird supernatural stuff that happens where the people like kind of tell a lot of like similar stories. And I don't like know 12 if- monkeys. You know, I never saw it. Oh my God, you're Miss uh, you know, like JK Ultra. You've never seen 12 monkeys? I need to. Oh my God. Oh my God. But the idea of the insane asylum is the transits are about to start. Mm. So they're coming back. And that's what they've been saying in California, New York, right? Florida, like we need to spend our money on mental health yeah. and then changing the laws of like, oh, you're on the street and you're on drugs. Da, da, da. We can here, we'll put you in this fucking insane asylum. And that's what happened in the 1800s and, and the transits that we're coming into. It's such a complicated that, issue. That, that people are again going to give their consent away to mm -hmm. that and voting for that and thinking they're doing it for mental health when they're really not. When really a lot of it's, whether it's pole shift and mm -hmm. what's happening with the sun, yeah. that the idea of the return to Christ of always is going to be the return every day. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, it always is that misleading thing. And that's what, I, if anything, the return of Christ would be like, hey, the, the truth that it's just this basic way to live and be a good Christ consciousness and yeah. human being, not this physical, like, Christ is back. Hello, you know? And, 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 and what is he supposed to look like? The, the fake version that they've made him look like? Yeah. I mean, like, that's, that's what's really difficult. You know, any dude with long hair is wearing fucking Birkenstocks walking around. <laughs> he's been called, you know... Jesus Christ, but even his name is in, in English is different. Mm -hmm. The the way that we understand like Christmas and his birth that we just had, right? Is I mean we have to it's sad that we have to like tell people and go back to like maybe you need to watch some of the old zeitgeists. Yeah, right. Again, and remember that all the religions have the same story mm -hmm. of their savior. So and, in this, and, they do uh, talk you know. about um, the Jesus thing. And uh, they talk about that it was in March, in the beginning of March was his birth. And they talk about how the uh, the three kings were not kings, that they were astrologers. Right. Um, and that this star in the sky or whatever, I'll have to find it in, in here Bethlehem. and I'll text it to you. Um, it had said something that it was actually, I believe, I'll find it and send you the thing after this. I believe they said it was jupiter in the sky that yeah. with this timing of the actual year that jesus was born it was actually a planet not a star and that's why you know it was so bright and it was there for so long and um i think they said it was jupiter but i have to yeah, look it was i have to find jupiter it retrograde right and it was probably up high like we've been seeing with it in taurus at night but what, what's weird is the star of bethlehem would be virgo mm. the house of bread mm. Right. So like there's a lot of charts with the Virgo element and with the Pisces. So, you know, the, it's like interesting of we're kind of in a time like that now, but the opposite signs where it's like, oh, yeah, like Jupiter and Taurus. Right. And we've been seeing all this Scorpio shit mm -hmm. and all the Scorpio shit's done. There's no big transits coming there for a long time. There's no big transits coming into Sag anymore. No outer planet ship. Capricorn's done after Pluto. So it's all going to Aquarius and Pisces and then this Aries story in 2026, which is going to be the beginning of a new world. And by 2027, we start seeing the Uranus and mm. nice trines of Pluto 
and and all these different kind of like new world and much more like hey we're fucking starting to move into a better place here but we're you know the bottom of the barrel we're not at that yet mm -hmm. like if anything nobody wants you, you always clean the house but at the end of the year or every year or so you finally get into every girl right like can you clean the drain, honey? Like of the, the, <laughs> it's shower? the worst. Oh, okay. Let me get in there. Fuck. Let me pull this shit out. And then, oh, let me. Can you go into the house and fucking get all that? Oh my <laughs> god! Get all this. That's where we have to go. And, and 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 the good news is, I think, as an astrologer, you know, twenty twenty seven. Yeah, and that's even what the human design mm. prophecies say. And what and is the human have, design prophecy? Oh, that's the one of the hugest ones. I mean, that's really the. The, the cross that we went into of planning that we've been in since the 1600s is ending in 2027 wow. to go into cross of the rising of the, the, the cross of the sleeping Phoenix, which is moving it more into the emotional center, oh, wow. the solar plexus, and then also activating the 2034 that's from the throat down to the sacral, which is like survival. And mm. then this creating of this new species of humans wow that are more kind of like autistic like, but they're really raves where they, they talk to mm. each other and more of more than just two people, like in three or more of a pair. Oh, wow. And, and we're moving into it. And, and also if you're relying on any system, the post office, the grocery store and all, all that's going to be coming mm -hmm. down over these years. Wow, yeah. And you, I mean, go look at the world right now. Like mm -hmm. look at shipping, look at, look at all the things that are already happening and look at the financial systems and all that. Right. Like, you know, like, Everybody wants the new world. Well, the new world also comes with the bad world ending. And I think that people think it's just Hillary Clinton or, you know, mm -hmm. the Epstein list. Yeah. It's like, I think that you're missing the mark when, uh, you know, the ability to just drive your car to get gas, to get that, to get that. Or even, oh, well, it'll be, they're trying to get us on electric cars. They can't even fucking figure out how to do that. But I think that with Pluto and Aquarius, the technologies can definitely... Mm. I think be revealed that we already had. I don't think that there's new shit we're yeah. finding and, and, and anything, I think, you know, the big secret, and I know people might be pissed, but I feel like the government already has rare entities of minerals or some sort of stuff that is the new value system oh, yeah. and that they're holding on to and that crypto will not be what mm -hmm. people think. That was a Pluto Capricorn ingress to yeah. be the savior yeah i don't feel like it's going to be and crypto right now you're seeing at the end of it this look like it's going to be and it's not and that's gonna hurt it's too easy people. to evaporate because it just yeah. doesn't really i mean i know money doesn't exist but that really doesn't exist well yeah and if you think of ai being smart enough to take over the block and actually the number one thing that happened at the beginning of the revolutionary war was the counterfeit money oh so People think, oh, it can't be counterfeited. Well, anything that you say can't will. Wow, yeah. Right? Like, oh, you can't get coronavirus if you get a shot. Mm -hmm. Pfft, same thing as crypto can't and the blockchain can't be corrupted so with AI. Are you kidding? Or, so we could put up a false wall and make you look like in your wallet. Oh, I've got all this money. Well, I've diverted it somewhere else. Yeah, wow. So we're at a, we're at a, to where people are trying to, again, where's the safety rail? It's Jesus, it's Muhammad, it's free Palestine, it's no, save these people, it's that, it's this, it's this. And everybody's just trying to find a safety rail, crypto, mm -hmm. right? When, when if you use just history, like Pluto actually is what goes underneath in the earth and finds the rare minerals like gold mm. and silver, right? And in alchemy, that's the whole process. And also it's the sun and the moon. The sun's gold, the moon is silver. Right. So those are two things that always come together. Interesting. And that have stayed with us throughout not just the age of Pisces, but even the age of Aries and even the age of Taurus. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I, I'm like one of those people that as an astrologer, I go, OK, if I'm going to go back to like age of Taurus, what's still with us? Gold, silver and astrologers mm. and prostitution. Prostitution. <laughs> Um, and and then, some form know, of intelligence agencies, right, exactly, but just exactly. not for the government. Yeah. Some form of intelligence. <laughs> it's, so it's very weird that we're at that. People are, all of those things are important. But like, I, I, I've been warning people forever. You think that they're going to do some great reveal and that they're going to expose fully everything? No. Mm -hmm. Things yeah. will fall apart before yeah. then. And, 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 and that's the big prophecy too in human design is that 
we're at the end of the information age where information will not be easily accessible anymore. Not oh. because of, not because of like uh, censorship, but because the, the, collapse. The, the collapse of the systems and the fi- like the connection mm. systems and it will be passed on as fa- like, think of how the word of Jesus passed yeah. on for 325 years, how much of that story was yeah. correct and what, what isn't. And same thing like is now, right? Like, well, what, what are we going to tell? And, you know, all of it's digitally archived, but if the digital archives can't be accessed. So that's why, you know, I, I, mean, I bring up books from 1600s mm-hmm. and I go buy them and it takes And a that's while why, them, you know, they digitized you know. all the books. Right. Uh, my friend was telling me this about like the digitizing of the books that then those other books are kind of being removed. We don't know where. And uh, it's kind of like a modern day book burning. You know, even with it being right. called Kindle, Kindle is like a fire. It's kind of right. like the burning of books. And then you're right. If our systems go down, now all of our information has been digitized. There's nothing except those books from the 1600s, you right. know? Well, I think, you know, people have been, uh, maybe to end this, there's been all this talk about bunkers. Oh, yeah. And now it just got released that Joe Biden's building a bunker. Oh, house, God, right? he's not going to make it. Well, they started it in, in August. He got the approval and all that, right? So then we saw the Mark Zuckerberg that oh that's been God. going on for all these years. And everybody's like, oh, what's going to happen? And I think more of like civil unrest, like they just mm. want to go place to hide. And, oh, yeah. And not have to deal with anybody or Obama's movie. Having they have all green screens in the bunker, the whole no, bunker I mean, screen. Scenes. I mean, they're already doing that. That's <laughs> fucking creepy, but I want to get your opinion on the bunker thing. Like, do you think it's maybe solar flares or maybe do you think it's, you know, some people of course are going to the extremes thinking like it's the Obama movie, like a cyber attack um, or which that movie was fucking insane. I, f- I follow a TikToker that fucking saw things in there that I had to rewatch a couple of those scenes through the TikTok and be like, I can't believe I didn't see that. I can't wow. believe I didn't see that. I have to watch it still. I haven't like, watched it yet. Oh, it's crazy. But. Um, I'm not someone kind of going back to like that concept of like creating our own reality. I really don't give much energy or attention to a lot of those kind of worst possible scenarios. So I don't really get much into the solar flare. I also think a lot of people kind of get into the solar stuff and make it sound really dumb. You know, like a lot of people run with that information and use it the same way that they use, like, you know, Christ is coming, the solar flare is coming. So I feel like I haven't heard a lot of information that I really resonate with, but I'm such a believer of like, we're creating our reality. So I'm like, I am holding that image, no matter how bad anything gets that like, on the other side of this is what has been prophesized is what the golden age that Nostradamus talked about that everyone um, has talked about. And we also know inside of us, we wouldn't be connected to this information if we weren't in our hearts knowing and in our souls, remembering the truth that like this is, we're just in like a transitional stage you know, like everything's waves and it's like a roller coaster. You're going to go down before it goes up again. So, Personally, I don't really assign to the belief that any of these conspiracies are going to play out this way, at least not in my reality. There might be people who do, but it's like, I'm, and I also see myself a little bit kind of, you know, society is not sustainable. Trying to figure out other means of, um, you know, different communities, which is always, you know, difficult too. When you see any time people try to do these off-grid communities or anything, that's also... Yeah, it ends up like Slab City. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've driven my can in. I freaking too, love Slab City. I've been there. It's so cool. And <laughs> I wouldn't want to sleep there. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I went there and it, it, people were drinking water with mud. Mm. Like, that's a drink. Yeah. Um, really weird. But I was thinking more on your lines, too, is that if I was putting myself in the shoes of like Mark Zuckerberg, Kim Kardashian, because mm. she built hers, right? Um, fucking Joe Biden, which who knows if he's even real or if that's just another weird yeah. thing that's coming out. But any of these people don't want to probably integrate with the collective. Yeah. If, you know, I, I feel like we're going to have a transition. Whatever that's going to be, there's going to be a transition. And I think it's about showing up to the transition instead of being afraid of it. Yeah, I think these that's what we're just, here for. Yeah, I think these people just want to sit in a bunker that's, again, another safety place. Like, I just want to comfortably eat my little Campbell soup and watch mm-hmm. my fucking movies and just like not deal with the transition. 
Well, it's like that and, American you know, horror story, uh, the, the apocalypse season. Uh, there was like, I don't know if you watched it, but basically the world starts ending. It's in the first, I'm not, no spoilers. It's the first 15 minutes of the season. And then everybody is like kind of traveling to the bunkers or whatever. And none of the billionaires make it. It's just witches. <laughs> like five or six witches right. make it. And it's like, that's what's going to happen. They're going to build all these bunkers. And then it's going to be like the random people who listen to their intuition that are going to be like, huh, I need to go and follow those people right over there. And it'll be like, I feel like that's what's going to end up happening is like, because at the end of the day, we all have our destiny. And if you're walking the path of your destiny, I do feel like you're mostly invincible then. Obviously you don't, can't do stupid, reckless things from your ego, but if you're walking the path of your destiny, until that destiny says like, it's yeah. part of your soul contract to die here for this purpose, then you're gonna be protected. And like, we have a million ways to die every day, but we don't because we're walking the path of our destiny. And so I feel like that's really where I see a lot of this going. And it really just comes back to, we don't even know if in three years, any of this shit's gonna be here. If we're gonna have internet in three years, I mean, most likely we will, but there right. is the chance that everything will collapse. And it's like, you know, we have to really ask ourselves, I, everyone is now with these issues in the world being faced with what really matters to you. And also like it says in the Barbara Marciniak, the bringers of the Dawn book, she says is the purpose of the star seeds, even though she doesn't really call them star seeds, but the purpose of the light workers, this wave of people is to bring the value of human life back to the surface. Right. And that's like as simple as it is. So it's like, even with all this fucked up stuff that's happening, that is what's happening. Even the most NPC, unaware, dumb people are caring about the value of human life right now. So it's still, even the worst things, you know, the mandates in 2020 was so bad for free will, for humanity, but it forced a lot of people to take a stance on something and they never even had a purpose before right. that. You know, all of this stuff, all of these things that are terrible, the, you know, they did the vaccines, all of this, like, it just pushes people to like really step into, you know, their hero's journey. So yeah. at the same time, it's like everything collapsing. It's like, I don't know, hopefully for some of us, we're lucky we could start our hero's journey a little earlier than the apocalypse. Yeah. But it basically when the shit hits is that's kind of like the people who are walking their destiny will be divinely guided. And I guess this kind of comes back to what we're saying about the rapture though, but it's different because the difference with the rapture is that it's an outside source. It's God or Jesus telling you that you were enough. You did good enough. You made my cut. Whereas the stuff that we talk about in this more spiritual aspect is it's coming from within you. Yeah. It's you deciding for yourself. Have I lived true to myself? Have I lived right in this life? Have I focused on the right things? And that's kind of when this ascension is going to happen. So I feel like, everyone's being pushed right now to see the things that will push them to wake up. Yeah. And I, I love that you said all that because I feel like if you're not in your destiny, you're in trying to control your life. Mm. And I feel like people that do the bunker thing are trying to control everything and they realize they're not going to make it to that bunker. They're actually probably smart enough to actually do the math, the algorithms. They probably look into all the same spiritual stuff and they've got to a place to where like, I can't live that life of finding my destiny because I don't, won't have control. The universe has control. God has control of mm -hmm. a much greater force within me that I don't want to find. Yeah. And I think that's what we're dealing with is a lot of people out there who during these last four years, you know, just whether they, it's not like they didn't have an opportunity. There's been so many opportunities since you were born. And I think of, especially Dolores Cannon with her three waves, being a second wave or like, where's a, I always, I'm so grateful for the first waivers. Mm -hmm. That's the, I was the hard job, yeah. like fucking having to in the sixties and push people to start, you know, okay, maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe there's a lot more than just, you yeah. know, you're, I mean, look at the people pie. like Linda Moulton Howe and people like that, like that is like real first wave right there. Like people like Linda sacrificed it all yeah. for us now to be able to be like, Aliens are real guys. Or Jordan <laughs> Maxwell. I was, yeah. I was lucky to meet him and do his website in 2011. Oh, cool. And he, he really, especially like if people think Alex Jones is mm -hmm. conspiracy, like, wait, no, no, no. It was Jordan Maxwell that yeah. Alex Jones piggybacked off of. And, or to me, I also think of Timothy Leary, you know, mm -hmm. like getting out of the academia and creating his own Millbrook and doing live public debates with the media about, how society's gone crazy 
and that these people are here trying to attach to this reality that's all consumer based mm. to how you should be with your kids, like how you can't spiritually raise your kids. You need to put it, indoctrinate them in a certain way and all yeah. this crazy shit. But I feel like a second wave people like, you know, we're here to m maintain and, you know, for Sophia and I to have Aurora, you know, over this last year, making the making decision last year, I, a lot of people have been like, you're crazy, you know, you're crazy to bring a child in at this time. And it's like, no, I already know. Like mm -hmm. whether she aligns with it or not, I don't know, but at least I'm giving another soul an opportunity. If, they, if she, feel, I'm not going to force her to be a spiritual person. I'm like, yeah. you know? But if she chooses that, well, they, they, that's there, but I'm not afraid of the future. There's no, you know, like, if anything, she'll probably be a better human being than all of us that will actually live the more way that most of humanity's always lived than mm -hmm. this. You can look at it as a positive and a negative. Like the humanity we've all lived through for the last, you know, 100 years has been epic in the sense of, wow, we got to live this simulation with a lot of comforts and a lot of like cool little, you know, tests, societal mm -hmm. tests and stuff. Uh, most humanity doesn't get to do that and 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 pluto has shown it's over like i'm sorry like i, I you know it's it, and if anything i think you know when you see people trying to build these off-grid societies and stuff they've kind of failed but i feel like we can find a way for it all to be integrated mm -hmm. it's not like you need to be off-grid or you're in grid or you're yeah. in the city or you're in that place because that's exactly separating us all and 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 that's what's so funny is people i always have been saying it a lot lately so people are like i can't be by all the radiation from all the cell towers and i'm like you're fucking in the middle of nowhere and there's starlink fucking just sending 8g 8g <laughs> on your ass same shit like i don't know what this does. So i don't care where you're at now it's fucking there's more satellites than you can even see and go look with your own eyes go put on military fucking headset of you know night vision and go and look at the sky with zoom on it i know they're like five grand but jimmy church when i went to his house and did that and saw fucking craft but you know in between all the craft it's like there's starlink you know there's wow. another starlink it's everywhere wow and 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 that's the weird and all the satellites it's insane and i think that we have to remember that you know so there's conspiracy theorists they don't think that there's satellites you know oh boy. Like, i fucking see them in the fucking yeah. sky um you know so we're, we're at a place to where don't be afraid and the prophecy stuff is awesome especially i think the deeper root whether it's nostradamus or the work that loris cannon was doing about new earth or even john d and mm -hmm. seeing past the super celestial to all this that god created that's the way that he put it mm -hmm. that there's this whole eternity out there this horizon of eternity he called it that we are all yearning to feel but at the same time let's not try and force ourselves into that there's a wow. reason why we're taking this step by step to get there and the crazy part is that we the door is fucking not just cracked anymore it's about to open mm. and then that means we still haven't even taken our first steps inside that doorway let alone into the fucking new luckily paradigm. us second waivers yeah. are so resilient and have been through so much you yeah. know second waivers have we've already lived like a hundred lifetimes in just yeah. this lifetime so we're like you know screw it walk through the door if the world ends we'll figure it out we figured everything else out i know <laughs> And, and I think that's that's where the best part is, is make it the fucking, we came here for a fucking adventure. And, yeah. and I'm glad that the adventure looks crazy and fun because that makes it fun. Because if this would have been a boring life, I would have been really upset. Like Dolores talks about you know? all those past lives of people just picking potatoes. The whole life, all they did was pick potatoes. How lucky are we to be here during these crazy times? I know, one life I just sat drinking whiskey at a fucking saloon. You might think that that's great with money. It was fucking lonely and yeah. it was boring. And there was only a couple good guys at poker. <laughs> and the girl that I loved was a fucking prostitute who did not want to not be a prostitute anymore. And she would not, no matter how much money I threw at her, how much charm I tried, didn't work. It was a very lonely life, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, that's one of my many past lives, but it's like, you know, we're lucky to be in this one because I don't even think in the future to try and do a fucking past life regression on this life. Would oh be like, my I God. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> You're going to be <laughs> rattling off, um, you know, and I think that that's the best part about it. And I think that if you can have a grain of salt 
of the negative, like that's okay. Like, and, and push that away, but remember to have humor, fun, find mm -hmm. people that you can talk about. You're not crazy either. Mm -hmm. It's better to get the ideas out and to, to feel the ideas and to sort through the ideas, to research them, to play with some of them. And, and, and instead of just be bottled up and repress yourself and put yourself through fear constantly, because I feel like the anxiety and the mental disorders that are happening is because of so much repression mm, yeah. of these ideas, these thoughts, these, these, these things that are happening, instead of embracing them and being like, okay, let's see what this fucking is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you do so great. So it's been great to have you on, mm. Julie. Thanks so much, David. This was yeah. so much fun. I'm so glad that we got to do this and we got to dig into the Nostradamus stuff. And I'm going to send you a couple of other things too, as I find them. Cool. Yeah. You got to read these books. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you some of the stuff and I'll put it out there for people on YouTube once we're done with Hypergate 3, with the scrying and connecting over the last three years of schools of the most intense shit through all these prophecy works. And it, it, it fucking works. Well, you're doing great work and um, your predictions and your prophecies have mm -hmm. all been very much on point. I've been watching the whole time. It's been on point. I always say it. I'm like, look, you guys might not like Leo King's delivery, but he's right. So, um, no, but you know, my delivery, I feel, I you think know, your delivery is great, but I get oh. why sometimes people um, can't handle the truth when it's presented in that way. It's not wrapped always in a perfect little sweet package. Sometimes it's just the truth. I remember one time you said, um, it was so funny. You were like, I wouldn't manifest under this moon. I wouldn't put my fucking crystals under this moon. And it was like, that's the type of astrology not everyone's ready for, but you need to be able to take. <laughs> Well, I know that because if it's a eclipse or if it's a dark balsamic moon or whatever, <laughs> even at uh, when we were at History in the Stars, I didn't go to the meditation because it was a dark moon. Mm. And I said it in my my lecture. I was like, "These are the devil days," you know. Like that's the old <laughs> term from the, the, the Tibetans, and we got the understanding of a dark moon from the Tibetans and mm. and integrated. And astrology is all astrology from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But as I say about my delivery, I I. Number one, being a dad has changed me dramatically. And then number two, pre-2020, a lot of people want me to be that guy again. Mm. A lot of people are upset with my delivery because uh, number one, I, I was telling you what would happen, it was happening, and then everybody was cool in 2020 with me until the shot came out and mm -hmm. I was saying, experiments gone bad, Saturn you're on a square, don't. And so a lot of it was based off that. And then of course, I was somebody who took it very seriously that the rights, the demonization of people who chose our own body, we were demonized, we were pushed away from society. And I was a very loud voice mm -hmm. to push up against that. And so while at the same time being like, look at like that thing's not gonna work and people didn't wanna hear it. And, and, and I was using astrology. That was, I wasn't using some personal belief mm -hmm. system I, because I, to be honest with you, if I didn't have astrology, I probably would have just been somebody who just was like, okay, but I still probably would have been like, eh. And I, I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. Cause like I, you know, I'm not an easy, during the last three years, especially 21 through now, I, I have been a deliverer of like, fuck. The astrology has been extreme and it's going to be extreme. And it's going to continue. So I'm going to meet it with that extreme energy and deliver it. But people know who I am at the mm -hmm. core. And I would say that, you know, having a daughter and being a dad has definitely, you know, helped with my delivery more. So people have been a lot more like, oh, there's parts of him. I'm never going to be the same person I was. Mm -hmm. We never we're will. Evolving. None of us. We're yeah. All, we're always all evolving, but I can say that I know for my life and I had to maybe prove to myself cause I don't want to die and say that when the fucking shit went down, I was there full fucking force sh screaming at the top of my lungs about it. And I'm all about the collective consciousness. So when you try to subjugate these, pe this group of people that are trying to just fucking live their lives and not worried about the fears that are coming from a fucking television or your phone, um, that we all know and now know has been proven mm. that was all bullshit. I could say that I fucking was on the right side. I just, I, I'm, you know, and that I stood up for every human being at that mm -hmm. moment. And like, you know, people can still demonize me for it, whatever, but that's life. You did the right thing. And, um, 
I think now everything, you know, like we talked about before, the divine timing of everything, we will only know in the future, the true divine timing of how that all went down. You know, we can hindsight that we have right now is like too clouded. But like I said earlier, it's like, I think that this is, that was one of the big things that really pushed people to be true to themselves and find what matters again. And it was, even though it was like a, one of the most dark, messed up things that happened, it was also like literally one of the most like beautiful, brave things that could have happened too, because millions of people who never stood up for anything, you stood up for things throughout, but then for a lot of people who never stood up for anything, that was finally their thing to come out. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say with Saturn, Neptune, and Pisces, we have to remember that they're pushing everything under the rug, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, get over this. So in the collective now, there's this sense like, yeah, I don't want to talk about the political things that have happened. I'm over it. I don't want to talk about the COVID thing. I'm mm -hmm. over it. That's so Pisces, Saturn, Neptune, and Saturn's not going to allow Neptune, and Neptune's not going to allow Saturn to, uh, Neptune's going to try and force Saturn and be like, yeah, you know, we don't need to confront anything that went wrong or da da da, -da and just, just let it be the past, let mm -hmm. it be the past. But when it's created such a deep hole, because if you think about in Vedic astrology, the nakshatra of Mula is what comes at the beginning of Sagittarius. And, and, and I have Jupiter there. And so I've learned a lot in Vedic astrology, right? It's about the roots, but it's about how in Vedics, they believe that after Scorpio, you need to go to the root and then pull mm. them because of those fears that transcend to come into the positive, you have to de-root and get back to the root and replant a new seed. Wow. And so people are still in this place where, okay, the fears happen and what are you just gonna keep the energy if we're gonna use vibrational energy mm. that you put into the soil of the of your roots that you can just move on and it'll be good? No, we need to pull those out and mm. replant a new seed and be aware and conscious and talk about the seed we're all planting now. Wow. Even if we're talking about a new world. And that's why I'm still not fully the Leo King. You just want me to be as in 2014, not sitting on a fucking lake in 2013 <laughs> or whatever. Like, you know, it's like we need to have that conscious talk, especially in the spiritual community. But, you know, as I showed you in the astrology community, they're fucking like telling you that you need to test to go to an event in 2024. Like we're at some really weird shit still and so i'll still be vocal but you know i'll do it the best i can but i'm also not gonna i don't think anybody should stop to try to stop their soul from expressing how they need to express it so well i'm so glad we did this david same here where do we find you? You're mainly on TikTok and YouTube. But yeah. Do you have like a website or anything like that? Um, TikTok is JK Ultra. So is um, YouTube. Instagram is JK Ultra Jen. Um, and then I just started Substack. So Substack is similar to Patreon, but it's more yeah. towards writing. So um, if you guys are interested in really the best writing. This is the place to support writers today. Yeah. And also if you download the app, they have a play button. So you can yeah. kind of turn any article into a podcast. Yep. So if uh, that's what you guys are interested in, I just started over there and I'm going to be sharing some deep dives and also personal stories and some stuff that I just wouldn't really post about on the other platforms. Awesome. Well, Thanks. it's been awesome knowing you and yeah. to have you on and to see your awesome blow up with such amazing content. Oh, thank you. Stuff that we all love in the spiritual community that's you go way deeper into describe it in such an awesome way. So oh, super thank happy you. to have you here. I know tons of people love you and it's great to be your friend. Yeah, you too, David. I'm so glad this has been such a full circle moment too, you know, from watching your stuff back in the day when you were first starting on YouTube and then we both won awards together and now we're both here. Um, it's a great full circle moment. It is. It is. I know. I thought I was like, wow, it was just what, like a month ago or a month and a half ago or both in Vegas at the same table gotten, I didn't know they were How crazy doing it like that. I thought, Oh, I was like, I thought we, you, it was going to be either me, you, or, I know. or fucking Jason or any of these people. And then I didn't know they were separating the female and male. And then we both won. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, it was and so good. The table basically yes. Won. That was so great. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I'm so glad that. And then Nick Pope was just there like a rock I'm, star. I know. Not nominated, but just there with all the winners. I know. <laughs> Well, it was, it was awesome. Honestly, was. that was an amazing event. It's, that was reminding me of where the future is going for spirituality. Mm, same, you know? same. Um, 
And, and anybody out there that's still on the fence, follow somebody like, you know, Jen, because she's got, I think you said it best. I felt like I was missing out on fucking all the shit. <laughs> and, but you had a, it was a lot more than that. You had a lot more to put out mm -hmm. and now it just flows, you know? Yeah. Now I'm developing to whatever's next. I'm in flow. I'm trusting the journey right now. So. Booyah. What's your human design? Manifesting generator. Do you know what profile? Hermit role model. Is that what those are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hermit role Six model. Two. Mm -hmm. That's funny because you and Aurora have the same. Oh, we birthday. do. She's a six two, but she's an emotional generator. But yeah. Oh, so she's six two also. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is so crazy. That is crazy. I knew that was going to happen when, um, when you were, when, when you were watching, like when you guys were getting close to giving birth, I was like, she's going to be born on my birthday. I know it. I know it. And <laughs> I'm like, was the last day I predicted as an astrologer, <laughs> I was like, I didn't even, I, 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 you know, the due date was August like 10th. Right. And I was like, 16th, I was like, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like she'll come around 10th. And then I was like, I don't think she'll be a double Leo. I don't think she'll have a moon Leo. Like, I, that's not gonna, and you would think that me being a fucking Leo, double Leo, especially, I'd be like, oh yeah, if I want a double Leo kid. But I was like, no, nah, that won't happen. Of course it did. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then it, a Libra rising and Sophia's a Libra rising. My dad's a Libra rising. That's my always how it happens. I'm like, oh my God. There's always that crossover from the parents. So my yeah. parents are Leo and Scorpio. And then I'm a Leo with a Scorpio rising. And my sister's Scorpio. So it always comes in like that. Like crosses over right. between parents. What's your moon again? Libra. Oh, boom. Yeah, that's Kind crazy. of balances it all out. It was weird because it was opposite with my mom and my, my, my dad was a double Aquarius with a Libra rising. And my mom is a, is a Virgo with a Pisces descendant with a Libra moon. Oh, wow. So it was like, I was the oddball. Interesting. Yeah. Like, and then nobody in my family is like Leo, except wow. like I have an uncle, but like no, nobody. So I was like, I, I, it was weird for me. I was, and I feel like an anomaly, you know? So I'm like, what the fuck? Little second wave star seed. Yeah. Coming well, into and, your family. And, and especially if people want to get into waves. It's it's really the Pluto where, where people's Plutos are. Mm. Like if, 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 if you're Pluto Leo, Virgo, you're first wave, you know. Mm -hmm. But I would say like second to last part of Virgo, it's first into second wave. Oh, interesting. You know, beginning of Pluto Libra and Scorpio is into sag i would even say is second wave mm -hmm. but, but there's a little second third wave crossover in sag and then the, these pluto capricorn and aquarius are going to be the third mm. wavers you know so look up to loris cannon yeah look up, look up the waves because those are pretty much what describes i think everything and and i ground in that oh yeah she did such a great job you know? of pulling through that information because it's know. so profound it's beyond profound yeah so well We'll, we'll see you all later. We'll see you on TikTok and YouTube. I know you do podcasts now on YouTube and stuff. And yeah, I do like a little live. Every Tuesday, I go live and talk about whatever I'm feeling that week. I feel like talking about. I literally like plan it like an hour before. No, so that's dope. No, <laughs> Thanks. <it's great. laughs> all right, everyone. Make sure you Thanks. check it out. Thanks for being on here. And we'll all see you later. Make sure you're on High Vibe. And tomorrow is my big 2024, the Cosmic Ooh. Phenomenon here at the studio, live streamed. Make sure you get it. All my predictions and how to get through 2024 on High Vibe. Adios. Peace out.